This is a presentation of the Oklahoma Sports Network. Any other use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the Oklahoma Sports Network's consent is prohibited. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be used without express written consent. Hello and welcome, everybody. We are back. Oklahoma high school football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. It's week 10. This is it. The finito, the regular season finale on the Oklahoma Sports Network. The Newcastle Racers, the Bethany Broncos, two teams that are going to be playing in the playoffs. Great stuff. This is what it's all about. Josh Calloway here with you. Join alongside my partner, Craig Billy Collier. Billy, I missed you last week. Ah, uh, me too. We've had two games this year. I did one without you, you did one without me, but we're back. Regular right. season finale. It's a great one. Newcastle, Bethany. Here we go. I mean, this is what it's all about. Oh, it's going to be a great game. I mean, you look at it on paper, the eye test, it looks like it's going to be a great game. Last week was probably one of the best games I've seen Newcastle play all season. I think tonight, the way they look on paper, the way they play against each other, and again, just watching them warm up, I think tonight could be an even better game. Yeah. And so I'm excited to see what's going to take place. Like you said, it's Friday night football on Thursday. It's a Thursday night. It's yeah. windy. It's going to mess us up a bunch of times. Yes. There's no doubt about that. This is normally, and it still is, but this is normally maybe my favorite night of the whole season because we're doing all the math and all the scoreboard watching. We're still going to do that tonight. We're going to dive into the standings in just a second, but not all the games are tonight, so that's going right. to cause some confusion uh, for us because normally everybody plays on that last Friday, and by the night's end, you know where we're going in the playoffs, who they're playing, all that stuff. But this year, they moved the game up a night, obviously, because of it looks like some weather's going to move in tomorrow. We're hoping it stays away tonight. It's kind of gloomy out here right now. And so because of that, we're not going to we're going to leave tonight's broadcast not totally knowing what we're looking at next week, which is a little different than normal. Usually we can kind of peek ahead, but we're not going to really be able to do that. Right. And you're right. We love the game of football. If we were sitting at Newcastle or we were sitting somewhere else, we love the game of football. And you're right. The last few years on the last night, we're going through score. Yeah, we're going you're through doing all the scores. You're looking you're at point together. Yeah. Say, hey, did you see this? And stuff like that when we're in commercial. But we won't be able to do that so much tonight. Yeah. No, so. no it's going to be a, a bit of a mess tonight. We'll see. Newcastle currently is in fourth. They could climb out of it. We won't know for sure if they will because, um, by my estimation, the rest of the district plays tomorrow, at least Tuttle right. and Blanchard do. So uh, we'll have to kind of be waiting and seeing on some things. But we'll still play out the scenarios as best we can here tonight. We'll get into that in just a second. This is the countdown to kickoff presented by Focus Federal Credit Union. Focus Federal Credit Union has been proudly serving Oklahoma for over 67 years by providing innovative products and services for you and your family. Enjoy a more personalized banking experience complete with a handshake and a smile. Everything you'd expect from your local credit union to find out more, visit them online at focusok.com or give by giving them a call 405-230-1328, federally insured by the NCUA. Let's go ahead and look at the standings as we enter play tonight. So with one game left for everybody, this is what we're looking at. As you see, Newcastle, they were in fourth. They have already clinched the playoffs. Tecumseh cannot catch them. There's nothing they can do to make up that ground. You see in the point differential there, nothing that the Savages can do. Newcastle is in. But what position they get is still up for grabs. They're currently 15 points back at Blanchard. 
So it really what it really amounts to is if Newcastle wins tonight and Blanchard loses tomorrow to Tecumseh, they could catch them. Obviously, if they don't, then there's nothing Newcastle can do, but that's the situation. It's also not out of the realm of possibility. Technically, they could catch Tuttle as well, although that's obviously unlikely. Tuttle playing who they got. They're playing Klassen at home. Klassen, obviously, as you see, has had a rough year. Very unlikely that that happens at Bill Hinkle Field. But that's why you play it out. You never know. But uh, so you that's might the situation. Hear a, you might hear us yelling if that happens, you know, <laughs> right. jumping around. And, you know, if you're new to high school football, you're, you're wondering, okay, what's the difference? They're in. What's the difference between four and three? It does affect who you play on the other side. Right now, Newcastle would play the number one team in District 1, which is currently Elk City. That's who they would play as of now. If they got up into third, they could theoretically play who finishes second in District 2, which I believe as of now, it's not Clinton there in third. Off to, we'll, we'll check it. Maybe but Chickasha. Chickasha is fourth. Fourth, okay. There's one more. I, 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 I looked right over it. But that's the difference. So that's why if you're Newcastle and you can, you want to work your way up a spot because it gives you theoretically an easier first round. And then, you know, maybe you get an upset on the other side and then you, you watch how it plays out from there. So one thing we do know, Newcastle is in. They don't have to sweat it, but you want to try and help your seating as much as you can, obviously, and that's what they're hoping for tonight. Right, that you want to get in. You don't want to limp into the playoffs. You want to go in with a little swagger. And so if they can play a great game tonight and, you know, maybe maybe luck is on our side or, or something, then it means that they can play somebody and build up to those top teams. Of course, to be the best, you got to beat the best. You know that, cliche, cliche. But I think if they can do their thing here tonight, then they can go in head hell high with a little swagger. Going to Elk City is not going to be an easy walk. It's going no, to be a, a, no. a tough game. They are good. They are very good. So that's going to be a challenge for them. But you go into that challenge with a great win under your belt, a lot better than going in with a couple of losses that you're trying to follow up on and not really knowing what's going to take place when you play a team like that. By the way, it's Weatherford. Weatherford, okay. I totally blanked on that. It's Weatherford's currently in second. Obviously, they still have some things to decide uh, in that district as well, although I do think, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, Elk City is Clint, so they are going to be one right. um, no matter what happens. Technically, it looks like Clinton could still catch Weatherford, so there's still some jockeying there. But if Newcastle loses tonight, I, you know, everything we said earlier, we can take that back because right. we know that we'll be going to Elk City That's next right. week. If Newcastle wins, there's still some things to be decided. So uh, we'll see how that plays out, and be sure to keep up with uh, scoreboard tomorrow and be scoreboard watching and uh, check the standings, do the math, figure out where we're headed. Wherever it is, we'll be there next week. Uh, for the playoffs, uh, racers, whether it's in Elk City or in Weatherford or even maybe by a grace of God here. <laughs> it would take a lot, but it is not out of the possibility right. just yet uh, here next Friday. So we'll see how that all shakes out. A lot to get through with this matchup. Billy and I are going to break it all down. We're going to take a timeout. Then we'll come back and we'll start to lay it out here between the racers and the Broncos. Bethany's had a big season. A, yes. Not a from nowhere by nature. They were good last year, but... They're trying to win the district title tonight if they can win here at Racer Stadium. Nobody really saw that coming. So the Broncos and Racers will preview it all next up right here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. When it comes to your home, you need someone that you can trust to keep it safe and protected for you and your family. Vesta Foundation Solutions is your local, family-owned company that has helped many homeowners fix and protect their homes. Our engineered solutions can take care of all of your foundation repair, basement waterproofing, concrete leveling, and dirt crawl space repair needs. We take pride in getting the job done right, and you'll always be protected with up to a 75-year warranty. Contact us today for a free estimate. We fight the battles no one hears about. We drop into the middle of firefights to rescue others. And act as one-man air traffic control towers. We're the ones who go before all others. Join the fight. CFD. Our mission is to deliver quality dentistry by providing big practice benefits with a little practice feel. Since 2008, we've updated our look, technology, 
and have added new smiles to our tenured staff to better care for you right here at home. Convenience for you is one of our biggest goals, and we often provide same-day treatment to minimize your time off work. We are open Monday through Friday to serve you. Visit cfdok.com for details. We look forward to seeing you at our big little practice. Sidelined by surgery, illness, injury? Valor Physical Therapy can help. At Valor PT, our skilled therapists create a rehabilitation program individualized for you with education and encouragement each step of the way. Whether it's sports or the activities of life, let Valor get you back in the game. Start now at 405-265-6449. No referral needed. Mention Oklahoma Sports Network and get a free t-shirt at your first appointment. All right, back here at Racer Stadium, going through senior night festivities here at Gene Reed Field. Last home game for a lot of these guys. Uh, obviously band members as well, managers, all that good stuff, cheerleaders. Cool, they all get a chance to be honored. Um, class of 23, that sounds like space or something. Yeah, I'm ancient. <laughs> what are you, class of what? 87. 87. Were you born then? I was not even close. Oh. Not even close. No, class of, uh, for high school, class of 15 uh, for me, uh, 2015. So, but, um, yeah, cool stuff on senior night. It's always kind of a, a, a you know, bittersweet thing. It is one of those cool things. It's a cool thing they all get honored, but it is hard. You know, we were, all, we were all in high school at some point, last home game for everybody, even the se seniors that are just in the student section. It, it's a... You know, it's kind of a, di a weird thing. It's one of those weird things. When you leave the stadium, you're like, that was it. Yeah. It's a weird uh, weird vibe. Well, when you're in high school, you're like, there's nothing left. Yeah. This is it, you know. <laughs> yeah, then you go <laughs> into college, and then you do it again in four years. Yeah. The same thing when I graduated from OU. Yeah. Um, then you have grandkids 35 years later. Sure. Yeah, I don't know this. I'm just ahead that they will in. I'm, I'm not here really, so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so senior night stuff, we'll see if the Racers can't uh, go out on a win tonight. It'd be a yes. big one if they did. We'll meet uh, the Broncos here a little bit. Mentioned right at the top, they're 8 and 1 coming into the year, coached by John Arthur. Really good season. Obviously, if you're a Racer fan, you've been with us for a couple of years. The Broncos were the one team that came over <laughs> in the realignment uh, from last year. Obviously, they were in District 1 with us. And Bethany came over to District 2 with Newcastle. So this is the one team that's the same from last year. They meet here. They won eight games last year. They were really good. They beat Newcastle. That was one game that you actually didn't do last year. I did it with Ryan. It was the Bethany okay, game. Okay, right. And that game, which you don't remember because you, you didn't do it with me, but the Broncos jumped up 21 nothing. I had to go back and look because I was like, what, what happened in that game? 21 nothing, and Newcastle came back and tied it after it was 21 nothing, and then Bethany won late to win that game at, uh, at over at SNU. So these two teams have played some good ones two years ago in 2020. Newcastle beat them here right. to clinch a playoff spot. That was a big game. So um, these two teams have played some really fun ones for us the last couple of years, and hoping for more of the same tonight. Mitch, they won eight games last year. Only one loss this year was to Tuttle, 40 to 34 in week four, which was a really long time ago. They just beat Blanchard last week, 21-12. So that tells you how good this team is. They are legit, and they don't clinch the district title with a win tonight unless they win by at least 15 points because then there's nothing that Blanchard and Tuttle could do. But they can uh, pretty much put it away with a win tonight, which is, right. you know, you come into a district with Tuttle and Blanchard, you come in and maybe win it. That's a statement. From, right. from Bethany if they come in and do that. This is a really good program. Well, and, and you beat all four teams that are in the top part of your district. You should. If you were 3-1 and one against the top four teams in your district, yeah. you should cap it off. You should walk in number one. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. So, Bethany, um, good team, obviously, looking to go 9-1 and one and set themselves up really good for the playoffs. So go ahead and dive into our keys to the game presented by Extreme Tree Service, premier tree service in the OKC Metro. Tree trimming, brand and tree removal, tree pruning, stump removal, and grinding. Call them at 405-977-9001. Extreme Tree Service, our keys to the game sponsor uh, this year on the Oklahoma Sports Network, Newcastle broadcast. Billy, what you got? What do you think is uh, got to happen tonight for the racers to get what would be 
I don't know, mild upset. It feels like a pick em, but uh, what do they got to do to get it done? Well, I think one on offense, one on defense. One on offense, they need to get Nick involved back in the program. He is that one that kind of surprised everybody at the first of the season. He's a big guy. He's hard to bring down. They're going to need a game with him pushing it, spreading out the defense. I think that's going to be a big one there. On on defense, I think that you're going to be looking at Heskew, Logan, and Schumard as they are on those outside cornerbacks. They have some great receivers for Bethany. Um, number seven, Taylor Heim, and then number 30, Woods Harrell. Excellent receivers, excellent hands. They're going to have to stay on them. They're tall receivers. So I think that's the goal for Newcastle is that on offense they need to get Knicks involved. Two, they need to, uh, on defense, the cornerbacks are going to have to come up with a couple of picks and stay on their man. Yeah, I agree completely. You know, you come into the game, you know, I, I'm hesitant to say that, you know, you're trying to spring the upset tonight. I mean, Newcastle is, you know, certainly formidable. They're 7-2, they're at home, all that all that good stuff. But you're going to play, probably need to play your best game uh, of the year to try and win this. And like you were saying earlier, what a way to go into the playoffs momentum-wise if you right. can win this. You were right there with Tuttle last week. We, uh, I did the Blanchard game earlier this year. That game was 6 nothing at halftime. Offense just couldn't quite find it. That game was really competitive, though. More competitive than the score would indicate. You lose by one score last week. You're thinking if, if we can beat Bethany with a close loss a ton of last week, there's a lot to, to you know, be optimistic about, I guess is the right word, Absolutely, going into yes. the playoffs. So um, it's going to take a lot. You're going to need you know, to do your, um, your best on defense to limit them. Bethany is physical. They always are. They're punishing. They always have big dudes. They always got big dudes. Right. They'll run the ball. They're really good at tackling. And they're not going to really beat themselves, really. Uh, so the yeah. Cats are going to have to play well. They're going to have to come out and take it uh, tonight here at Racer Stadium and try and get this one. So we'll see how that shakes out. We'll look at our starting lineups now. Our impact players presented by Chris Dumb, Allstate agent. Chris Dumb is your Allstate agent, offering auto life and home insurance. He enjoys being a part of this community and building local relationships is one of the best parts of his job. He knows what life is like here in Newcastle, so call him today for a free quote. 405-392-2390. Chris Dumb, Allstate agent, a very good sponsor of Newcastle Racers football. Some guys you're watching for tonight. You mentioned Randy Nix already. Yes, Randy. Well, uh, one, two guys I'm watching, uh, Carson, Carson Bolser and Grady Corbin are going to have to have a solid game tonight as well. I'm looking to them. Carson had over 200 yards last week. And so looking to see him continue that. He's running with a lot of confidence. Need to see him do that tonight so that it will open up the game, bring them in, maybe open up some passes down the way. However, number, big number 21, Jaden Gilliland for Bethany. Him and the quarterback, number 12, Cale Witwiska. They're excellent runners and hard people to bring down too. So the run games, when you talk about key to the game, if, they, if you can't uh, establish a run, then you're going to have a horrible passing game. Yeah. And you're going to be one-sided and it's going to be a long night. So both teams, as they're both equal, you remember preseason, they had Newcastle four, Bethany three. So they picked them to be fairly close. Yeah. If one of the teams cannot establish the run, then it's going to be a long night. Absolutely. I'm right there with you on Gilland. He's really talented. We've seen him for a couple years now. Also, of course, Taylor Heim, who is uh, yes. kind of the do-it-all guy. I didn't even write a position down for him. I just put athlete because he he's, a, he's a, yeah, everywhere. He's an everywhere kind of guy. He'll line up at quarterback. He'll probably split out wide at some point. He'll run the ball for sure. Um, he's a lot of fun, and Newcastle's done a really good job this year at taking away the opponent's best player, making yeah. other guys beat him. Yep. Um, so we'll see if they could do that as well with Heim and uh, this really good Bethany offense, as they always are. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, here tonight as the Racers and the Broncos get ready to mix it up. That was our starting lineup, our impact players uh, here tonight on a really actually nice night yeah, this as of now nice. hopefully yes. it doesn't uh, fall off a cliff or rain in or anything like that don't but, jinx uh, it as of now for early november we were joking about it with uh carson wade our producer who came on normally by now we've had at least two or three just frigid games we haven't really had that we've been pretty lucky other than the fact that it's been windy like every week right I, I broke out the hand warmers last week for uriah he was upstairs in three hours of rain couldn't feel his hands before that, I have not had. We haven't had a coat night. We haven't had a stocking cap and gloves night. No. It has been a beautiful, except for last week, beautiful season weather. Yeah, we've had to dodge some rain a couple of times, but 
Certainly by now, usually I've had a game where I'm like freezing, I can't wait for halftime or whatever. I haven't really had that this year. We've been pretty lucky on that front. Um, hopefully I didn't just jinx it for next week. You know, maybe we're, we'll be wherever we are, we're outside and we're freezing, but uh, hopefully the weather holds up. It's been a very warm fall in uh, Oklahoma, so hopefully more of the same. Uh, ahead as we get ready to go through the home stretch of the season here. Uh, last game of the regular season already, which is crazy. Yep. It goes by fast every time, and we look forward to seeing uh, what the racers can do to cap this thing off uh, here tonight at Racer Stadium. All right, we'll take one more time out here. We'll come back. We'll let you know the other matchup tonight in 4A2. We'll also look around on what's a huge night on the Oklahoma Sports Network. A ton of Thursday games in the whole state, but especially on OSN. We got a bunch. I'll talk about those as well next right here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. This is Friday Night Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. It's no secret that life is busy and you have a million things on your to-do list. Here at Community Bank of Oklahoma, we've made banking simple again. We can help you get to the important things in life, like the big game tonight. We do all the heavy lifting so you don't have to. Race towards us at Community Bank of Oklahoma because we wouldn't be a community without you. Coast Technology Group specializes in audio, video, and lighting for schools, house of worship, home, and business. Work with our team's engineers to design the right system for your conference rooms, video telecommunications, stadiums, auditoriums, video walls, home theater, and automation. Whether your next project is large or small, let our team with over 150 years of combined experience help design the right system with simple, reliable technology. We come from different backgrounds with diverse interests and unique learning styles. Finding classes that fit your individual needs isn't a challenge at Cameron University. A small campus and dedicated faculty ensures there's always someone close by to guide you on your journey. Your success is our success. Your education is our mission. At Cameron University, you're not a number, you're part of the family. When I'm flying, I put my helmet on, my visor down, my mask up. You don't know who I am, but I'm African American, Asian American, Hispanic, white, male or female. You just know I'm an American Airman kicking your butt. I'm General C.Q. Brown Jr. Come join us. Team up with Pioneer iVideo and start streaming the most popular TV shows and movies from your favorite devices today. Download the iVideo app and start watching anywhere in your home using Pioneer Internet. Each package includes free high definition and cloud DVR features like video on demand, restart TV, and replay TV, just in case you forget to record a program. Visit gopioneer.com for more details and compatible devices. Some restrictions apply. When it comes to your home, you need someone that you can trust to keep it safe and protected for you and your family. Vesta Foundation Solutions is your local, family-owned company that has helped many homeowners fix and protect their homes. Our engineered solutions can take care of all of your foundation repair, basement waterproofing, concrete leveling, and dirt crawl space repair needs. We take pride in getting the job done right, and you'll always be protected with up to a 75-year warranty. Contact us today for a free estimate. Band and uh, 
All right, you got the national anthem there. We're just about ready to rock and roll. Oh, yeah. Of course, Josh Calloway, Billy Collier, Carson Wade. On. Martinez up top working the camera for us. Week 10, final night of the regular season here this evening. The Racers and the Bethany Broncos should be a really, really good one. We're also on Facebook tonight, if you found us on the Oklahoma Sports Network Facebook page. Welcome. We uh, three games each week on Facebook. We made the cut. Hey, hey, how about that? We're in the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, so that's on Facebook tonight. You can also watch this game, of course, on YouTube, Roku, Amazon Fire Stick, Apple TV, the OSN app on your phone. Of course, is very convenient as well. OKSportsNet.com, wherever you got internet. Lots of ways to find us uh, tonight uh, and all season long into the playoffs as well. Going to be fun, and a lot of OSN teams are primed to make the playoffs. We'll talk about that. In just a second, we'll give you the 4A2 slate real quick. Hera Bridge Creek, they're playing tonight, um, I believe. At least that's, yes. this is all based on what OSAA has. They could be wrong. They could have missed one here. There was a lot of moving parts this week. But according to OSAA's website, Hera Bridge Creek is tonight. And then Tecumseh at Blanchard, Classen at Tuttle. Those are both tomorrow. So uh, we'll be peeking in a little bit on Hera Bridge Creek. Obviously, both those teams are at the bottom of the district. That's the final game of the season for both of them. So one, somebody will get to leave on a, on a bright spot. That's Somebody's right. Somebody's going to be taking another tough one. Been a rough year for Bridge Creek. Right. Uh, leave leave yeah. on a growing note. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. It, you know, can't, can't really be overlooked. You know, finishing on a win, even in a meaningless game. I talk about it all the time with, like, bowl games and college football, too. It does something for you to end on a win. The only yep. teams that get to end on a win is a team that holds the goal ball and then teams who don't make the playoffs and just win their final game. So right. it's not a lot of teams get to have that positive thing to carry – in the offseason, so we'll keep an eye uh, well, on that. And the, and the game that you talk about all offseason is the last game. You yeah. talk about how yeah. that came into it as well. So both those both those programs are rebuilding, so it'd be good to go out on a win. Teams are headed out for the coin toss. Our coin flip sponsor this year is Power Bowls, 623 Northwest 32nd Street, serving amazing smoothie bowls. Once you first try them, you'll be hooked. Find us right in front of Walmart Monday through Friday, 12 to 7, and, of course, 12 to 5 on Saturdays as well. Check them out, Power Bowls, 623 Northwest 32nd Street. Other games on OSN tonight while they go through the coin flip here. Lawton and Capitol Hill are mixing up. Lawton is on track to be one of eight eight OSN playoff teams potentially. Wow. Now there's uh, obviously some results pending on that, but we could have eight playoff teams. <laughs> OSN only carries, I think, ten teams, or maybe eleven with UConn now. Eight playoff teams is uh, a lot, and that's a high percentage. So I'll say that's a nice percentage for OSN. Not bad, not bad at all. So that's a big game tonight, Lawton. And Capitol Hill, Altus is taking on Il Reno. Big one here. This game is also going to be on Facebook. MacArthur and Noble, Eric Sherum, who, of course, did the game in my spot last week, and a big thank you to him filling in for me. Normally the voice of the MacArthur Highlanders. They got a big one with Noble tonight. That's essentially a playoff game. The winner of that is in. The loser of that season is done. So wow. That's a big game tonight. Lawton, MacArthur, and Noble. Uh, it's just to get out of the second screen and get that one going. Another big one tonight, Cash and Chicken Shade. That's another one. Same deal. Winner is into the playoffs, squeaks in at the four spot. The loser, done, diddly. So we'll see if uh, the Bulldogs get a win and get some playoff football out there for Billy Palmer and the Cash crew. Carl Albert's got Piedmont tonight, Dell City and Durant. UConn, the Millers, got Edmund Santa Fe as well. So we got eight games tonight, and there actually is still two tomorrow as well. Eisenhower in Southeast and Midwest City and Elgin. The Owls have been really, really good this season as well. They're going to be a playoff team. Uh, as well as well as Midwest City, so those are both playoff teams uh, next uh, next uh, next week, and they will meet tomorrow night on OSN. So the toss was won, I think, by Bethany, and they deferred for the second half. So Newcastle will have the football, and we'll get to see Jackson Burt and this Racers offense on the field first in the black jersey. Blue helmet, blue pants against Bethany in the all-white Stormtrooper look with the uh, the horseshoe on the helmet. Going to be fun, racers and Broncos. This has been the countdown to kickoff presented by Focus Federal Credit Union. We'll step aside. When we come back, we'll have the ball game for you. The kickoff is next. Newcastle, Bethany, right here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We fight the battles no one hears about. 
We drop into the middle of firefights to rescue others. And act as one-man air traffic control towers. We're the ones who go before all others. Join the fight. Here at Racer Stadium, Josh Calloway, Billy Collier, fired up, ready to go. Season finale. Playoffs next week. Cap it off in style here tonight with a great one. Newcastle and Bethany. Glad you could be with us. Josh Calloway, Billy Collier. Friday night on Facebook, Roku, Amazon, Fire Stick, Apple TV, OSN app, all the places you can find us. Where, however you did, we're glad you did. You're going to have a fun one here tonight. Newcastle and Bethany. Any last thoughts here as Bethany is ready to take the field and kick this thing off? For Newcastle to do well tonight, they're going to have to come out strong. We're not going to be able to start, run with right? them. With so, so they're going to have to come out solid, establish that run game, and keep pushing. So for the racers back, T.J. Bradford along with, I think that's Burchett on it the far is. side over there, will do the honors of returning this kick. Bethany will boot it away. Mentioned they're coached by John Arthur. The racers, are coach, of course, coached by Jeff Brickman. For the Broncos, do the honors. Russellin Calderon, just a sophomore, will do the kickoff here. And we'll get this thing started. Gonna be a fun one here tonight. All right, let's go, men. Let's go. <laughs> a good return and a good first drive would be uh, needed. Key. Would be would be appreciated. Kick is away and we're playing football at Racer Stadium. All of a bounce. Burchett's got it inside the 10. He'll take it across the field and hit down right about the 20, maybe about the 19 or so. And that's where the racer will set up shop. Quarterbacked by Jackson Burt and this racer offensive attack. Thank our first quarter sponsor here as we get ready to get started, Community Bank of Oklahoma. They offer a full range of services to suit your banking needs. We have what you are looking for with competitive rates and unequaled service, 2245 North Main Street, Community Bank of Oklahoma. So, racers on the first drive here. Jackson oh, wow. Burt in the shotgun, two receivers at the bottom, two at the top. So they get things started. Burt pump fake once, is gonna do a QB run, runs over a guy, and he'll pick up about three yards on first down. That was a surprise. I was expecting you know, at least a running back or something back there, so to open it up him by himself, it kind of set them back on their heels. Let's see if they do that again, maybe go with a pass or two. Design QB run there, obviously. Um, as uh, Burt kind of looked off, it was run all the way. We'll see uh, how that develops as we go in that QB run game. We know Burt can certainly do it. It's a four-yard pickup officially, second down and six. Hand off here up the middle. This is Bolzer. He's got room, mm. big hit. But he's tackled down. That might be enough for a first down. In fact, it is. First down for the Racers. That's what we mentioned in the pregame. Bethany, every time they play Bethany, they hit hard. They, do. they got big guys. It's kind of just, you know what you're getting with the Broncos each year. Well, and that was great. You saw the line just really get a push and a shove. You got Nicks. He came in and hit the defensive end to keep him out of the play. That was a good job. But then that was a slobber knocker hit. I think that was number 26 for them that hit him, Jack Gilliland, uh, that yeah. really hit him hard. And, so we'll see what happens from here. I, but I think that's a good start for a run game. Does go as a first down for Newcastle up to about the 28-yard line. Burt gives it off to Bolser again. He bounced out to the right side. Cuts back. There's room. And a nice Bolzer run by Bolser out near another first down. That was great vision by Carson Bolser. It's really close to the sticks. I think they're going to say it's second down and just a hair. Right. And, it, man, that was just a great run. Good job. He has really, the last couple of weeks, really stepped up his running. He's seeing the holes a lot faster, getting through them a lot faster. Yeah. I think if somebody hadn't slapped his shoe that time, he'd still be running. Yeah, first and, ten, racers. and then they decide to move the sticks after all, so it is a first down for Newcastle. That was great vision by Bolzer cutting outside and seeing the lane. Great job. Results in a first down. Here is that first down. Back to him. Keep feeding the hot hand. 
run up the middle, pushing Bolzer forward. And he'll get about uh, four or five yards out of that. Good hard run by Bolzer. Stay ahead of the sticks. That's what you need. Some whistle. Oh, there's a flag down there about the 48-yard. Oh, yeah, there, there was bodies all over. I didn't see it. There is a flag down. Oh, and wow. It's on Bethany. Wow, how about that? Good deal. So, penalty against the Broncos. So they moved it up yep. to the 48. And they're, they're saying this is they're calling still it a first, first down. Yeah, they're calling it first down for him. Well, I'm not really sure. <laughs> well, I think he picked up five, then the five gave him another. Okay, okay. It wasn't quite to where the sticks were. That's why I was a little yeah. confused. But Rangers will take it. First down and 10 on their own 48-yard line. Newcastle on the move. Good first drive here. Burt, another QB run. And Bethany was ready for it more so that time. Well, yeah. They've watched some film on that. It looked like that was 22 right there that was ready. Uh, Strader. Jordan Strotter. Yeah. yeah, they've watched some film on him. They're going to have to work those fakes out a little bit more. Quickly back up. Here's Bolser bouncing outside and not a whole lot there. He'll get maybe a yard or two. Sets up a third down and long. Yeah, third down and six. Obviously yet to see Jackson Burt air it out. It's pretty breezy again tonight. Can't see the flag obviously on the broadcast, but it's it's whipping up there in the left uh, the corner of the end zone. So it's it's on the breezy night. It has been a lot of that this year. Fortunately for these two teams, they like to run the ball. Right, so. you're gonna see a lot of running. Yeah, tonight. Called third down and about six here. Burt fakes the handoff. He'll fire underneath. It's caught bouncing outside Ooh. and tackled right short of the sticks. Like we mentioned it, good tackling team, and they did a good job to wrap that up. That was Randy Nix. And yep. you're going to have a fourth down and real short here. I imagine they're going to go for this. It looks like they are. Yeah, I think they're going to go for it here. You're right there in that area where to kick it only gets you a few more yards. Right. And this would be a good statement if they can get through that. They're going to have to do something other than run up the middle. They're going to have to get around the side somehow. So they're at about the 44. Got to get to the 42. Big fourth down play early in this game. The little moments where momentum can swing. This kind of feels like one. Fourth down and two right here. Nick's in motion. Burt takes a snap. He'll fake it to Bolster. Fire outside to Logan. He's got it. And then some first down inside the Good 40. Try. That was a great play call. Obviously, Coach Brickman saw something because Alex Logan had a lot of a lot of buffer on that yes. screen. Picked up that first down easily. Well, I'm glad they got rid of that ball so fast because you saw number 15, Jarko, going right for that defender. Quickly back up again. Bolzer, or, uh, Burt, excuse me, fakes the handoff. He rolls out to his right. He's going to go ahead and take off. Makes a man miss inside the 35. About a four or five yard pickup. That was a good job. They had him get very well covered on that side. Looks like he was wanting to go there to Rex Heskew. His defender was right there on the shoulder pad, so he didn't throw that, it. That's the good, yeah. First Picks down, up some yards. Roll out. You get about four or five yards. Take that every time. Take it. Every time. And the, new, and the racer's doing a really good job on this drive of staying ahead of the sticks. Obviously, knock right. on wood, but no penalties yet. No negative plays. What you got to have tonight. Second and five. Hand off to Bolster up the middle. Does another nice cut back. Pushing inside the 30. Going to be really close to the sticks again. It's going to just depend on which foot, basically, the official puts it down on. <laughs> they're, they're saying go. And they're saying it's another first down. This yeah. is a heck of a drive right now for Newcastle. got to finish it. but Right. Man. Well, you saw in that play the strength of Bolser. That linebacker had him but couldn't stop him, had to spin him around. He picked up another yard or so on the tackle. So first down for Newcastle, down to the 29-yard line. This is a really good drive being put together. Got to finish it, but so far so good. Four receiver set for Burt. He'll give it, he'll fake it to Bolzer, pass aside to Heskew. Oh, wrapped up by the jersey. Boy, Man. that's some strong hands on display that there was. for the Broncos. Number three, that's Jake Steer. Oh, no, excuse me, that's number 13, Jackson Payne. He's got a fistful of jersey and didn't let go. No, he did not. That's hard to do, too. That, that hurts yeah. your fingers. He's letting the other guys catch up and finish him off. That's the first play that they've lost yards on, I believe. Yeah, yeah I, I believe that's accurate. One yard loss is what it's called. Didn't have a lot of room there, but he would have got he would have got four or five if Payne didn't get the hand down on him. That was a good, good, really nice tackle. Yes. Second down and eleven. Already five minutes gone in this first quarter. Handoff Bolser pushing forward up the middle. Handoff goes to Not a whole lot Martin there. Bolzer. He'll get about two or three. It's like this up a third and long. Bethany's saying the ball came out, but the officials aren't having it. Saying no. he's down. Saying it's down. I think they almost don't want to do that on every down. That's our ball. It's our ball when you saw the crowd up like that. But he got up there. I saw him hit the ground with the ball, and then everybody started diving in. 
something you definitely have the uh, the potential for tonight. And again, a knock on wood situation, but is a very fast game with these yes. two teams that like to run the ball. You're already seeing half the first quarters melted away here. Oh, well, that was close. There was some awkward movement there. I was kind of holding my breath for it. Third and eight, it stays. Burt fake the handoff, fires out in the flat. Pass is caught by Nix, but Broncos are all over it. Well read and well defended there. That was Woods Harrell, number 30, mentioned him in the pregame. And he was all over that. Now it goes for no gain. Now you're kind of stuck in no man's land here. Fourth and long at the 27. Right. Or 26. And that's one of those things you're trying to mix it up, trying to keep on their heels. But they're a good, solid team. Well coached, well disciplined as well. So let's see what they come out with now. So fourth down and seven. Going to go for it. Obviously, it's a little far through a stiff wind to try Batchelder from out here. Fourth and seven. Burt fires out in the flat, caught by Logan. Logan breaks a tackle. There he he's goes. loose up the sideline. Alex Logan, he's in. Touchdown, Yo. Newcastle. Good wow. job, man. 26-yard touchdown. Who saw that coming? Nobody. <laughs> I, I don't know that they saw that coming. A little bubble screen on fourth and seven, and it worked like a charm. And an excellent, you see here on the playback, an excellent block out there that uh, just kind of froze all the cornerbacks. He got that, and once he got it, he was gone. So, great job, and they scored. Great what start. Absolutely excellent first drive for Newcastle. It results in a 26-yard touchdown off the bubble screen. And then Logan does the hold for the extra point. Batchelder boots it right through. Can't ask for a much better start than that for Newcastle. They lead it 7-0, just about six minutes in. Racer defense on the field next on the Oklahoma Sports Network. This is Friday Night Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Coast Technology Group specializes in audio, video, and lighting for schools, house of worship, home, and business. Work with our team's engineers to design the right system for your conference rooms, video telecommunications, stadiums, auditoriums, video walls, home theater, and automation. Whether your next project is large or small, let our team with over 150 years of combined experience help design the right system with simple, reliable technology. All right, back here at Racer Stadium. Excellent first drive for Newcastle. They go five minutes, 56 seconds, go the length of the field, punched in on a fourth down and seven on the 26. A little bubble screen to Alex Logan, and he housed it. You gotta like that. <laughs> I mean, what more can you want on a first drive? Yeah, it was an excellent call, and that's one of the things you notice about breaking the, well, last two or three years we've been doing this. Excellent at making the adjustments. It looks like he's going to just do the same thing over and over and over, and then he doesn't. He throws back something that you would think, well, this is not going to get much. They end up making a touchdown. So great call, great adjustment by the coach and staff and the players. And I will see if the Racers' defense can match that against a Broncos team that can score some points. They've got some gaudy point totals. I'll give them to you in just a second. They've, uh, they've gone up and over 40 a few times. Put yes. it that way. I think this is one of the areas where Newcastle and Bethany are a lot alike. They stay in their lanes um, on kickoffs and stuff. Let's see if we see that. Batchelder will kind of do a little pooch here. Uh -oh. Be fielded right by the 35, Ooh. and he got blasted. Big hit from Carl Young and TJ Bradford in there a little bit. Well, fair catch it, young man. Jeez oh. Louise, Alex Strother got popped. Man. You're right. You needed to fair call that one immediately. I would have, I would have waved till I heard somebody stepping towards me. Yeah, but man. I'm glad he got up and jogged off. So here come the Bethany offense, led by Numero Siete, number seven, Taylor Heim. Man, she's kind of a do-it-all guy. He's a big kid. He's at six foot five. He's quarterback, but I expect to see him do a lot of things tonight. He's going to run the ball. He, I, like I said earlier, it wouldn't surprise me if he gets out and catches a pass tonight. He's kind of a do-it-all guy for this Broncos team. First play, hands it off, nowhere to go. Bottled up right away. That's the running back, Jaden Gilliland. Nothing there for him. One that, yard gain. That was great. He had four four racers around him, led by big Mr. Nix right there. 
they grabbed him, stopped him. Um, he, his feet came off the ground immediately, and he went down. Mention this Bethany offense. They've scored some points this year. 41, 42, 40, 59, 67, 41, 48 tonight, or this wow. year. That's, uh, that's a lot of points. That's a lot yes. of scoring. That's this a Bethany lot. team is no stranger to getting down the field and putting up some big point totals. So it's going to be a stiff test for Newcastle tonight defensively. Second down and nine. Heim, QB keeper. This That'll is what we were cut. expecting, and there he goes. Look at the speed. Heim breaking loose inside the 45. When he gets going, he is like a horse. He can really get up. There is a flag down here right in front of the oh, Newcastle wow. sideline. Let's we'll see what that does. That was, You saw a great cut right there. He kind of stuck the linebacker like in a bad spot. Looks like Bethany might be coming back on this. The racers might be catching a break. And that's exactly a hold against the Broncos. Wow. But you saw there what Heim yes. is capable of. And look, the racers are no stranger to Heim. He's been on this team for a while, but if uh, you had forgotten maybe from years past, you, you were just reminded. He, he, when he gets up and goes, he, he's he got a lot to like about him. Well, he's a, he's a tall man. I bet he takes two strides for every 15 feet. That's five yards. And it doesn't look like he's going fast. He just kind of sails right through there. So that good for him, good run, bad penalty, but we'll take it. Absolutely. So back it up, second down and 10. Hine throws out in the flat, passes caught. This is Gilwin, makes one cut, wrapped around the foot and tackled. He'll get about eight yards or so. Good job by Bradford to limit that to not being a bigger play, but just set up That's a third right. and short. Boy, he fought through that block to do that. You saw him fighting through it. So um, that was a really good, really good stop. So third down and two coming up here for the Broncos. 4.45 and counting to play in this opening quarter. Chance for a quick three and out. Big play here, third and two. Hand off is fake. Time will mm. keep it. He's going to get it. First down across the 45-yard line. Nothing fancy, just a good old-fashioned read option. Pick it up. Right, L line up, run three yards forward, get down before they hit you hard. That was a good run, way to get up there for a first down. So the Broncos moved the chains for the first time. Newcastle benefited from that penalty, but unable to capitalize on it. And the Broncos moved the chains on their own 46 yard line. I think we're gonna see a lot of run by number seven there, Heim. I think we're gonna see a lot yeah. more of that keeper. Oh yeah. First and 10, Heim gives it off and nowhere to go there. Nicely done by the racers, bottling that up. Yeah, that was good. They Those just well all came to the inside. Against, uh, I think that's Jack Gillen, number 26. Got two Gillens, got to bounce back and forth. Jaden, 21, Jack, 26. Yeah. So we have to kind of uh, make sure we try to keep those straight tonight. It might be a bit of a challenge, but. Very much so. <laughs> One yard gain is second down and nine. Yet to see Heim air it out. It's the third one. Sure enough. <laughs> Younger, thankfully. Heim rolls out. He's got some guys chasing him. He's going to fire down the field. Got a man down here. Bradford, good defense. All over him. That was oh, really well defended. Did they? Yeah, down here rough in the passer. Oh, rough in the passer. I thought he meant on PI on Bradford. I was going to say that no. was just good defense. He had Woods Harrell down the field, but I didn't see back by the play. You think they're going to get him for roughing here? Uh, yeah, it looked, Billy's opinion, it looked a little worse than it was. He jumped up to throw that pass while he was in the air. Uh, number 20 there uh, came Carl over. Young, and Carl Young. Yeah, came over and gave him a good shove. So it looked like he went down pretty hard. We'll see what they decide. Uh, yeah talking about it they're, they're marching it off and that will be a rough in the passer call against the racer so there you go I caught a break and then yeah get hurt the other way because it would have been third and long coming up instead it's a first down for the broncos into racer territory that's tough that's just one of those tough ones right yeah, there yeah. i mean you, you don't you can't coach them to lay off you know so that's just a tough one so first and 10 up to the 38. Three or series at the top, one at the bottom. Heim will hand it off here. This is Jaden Gillen. Takes a big hit. That's Carl Young again. He's just popping everybody yeah. tonight. About a five-yard game. <laughs> By the end of this game, he may come up here and hit one of us. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'd probably just die if uh, Carl Young came and just decked me. Now, I know I have limited video, but I have not seen Gillen go down like that. That's the first time I've seen him really just off his feet yeah. and knocked yeah. down. So that was a good hit. First quarter is zooming by under three minutes to play in the first. Almost got a jump there, but he got back. 
as we've seen this year. It just depends on the crew if they're going right. to call that or not. Really shouldn't be called. Hyam rolls out. Got a man wide open right past the first down Ooh. inside the 25, pushing forward. I believe that was 14. Colton Calderon, a senior receiver. And the Broncos are on the outskirts of the red zone here on the move. Yeah, I don't. They were laying white, way off of him. The defender over there looks like it was Heskew, um, laying it probably eight to ten yards off of him. So that, that'll probably get uh, some adjustments. And I got some whistles here on a stoppage. Looks like there might be some bleeding there yeah, with the. It's not the guy GB. you want to be bleeding if you're no, Bethany you with a high. And they're gonna wrap up his leg real quick and they're going to start the play clock wow. yeah, so they're going to have to bring another quarterback in there they go yeah brought in Witniska. well he's still standing on the field <laughs> hi he's saying let me get off the field they're making a miss a snap so the quarterback yet yeah, coming in like you mentioned kale w whiska which is a really fun name to say yeah he'll take the snap here hand it off to gillen he'll bounce outside Ooh, makes one guy miss arm. that was a really good stiff arm gillen making guys and he's inside the 10. That was a nifty run there for Jaden Gillen, and the Broncos are knocking on the door. Yeah, they're right there in the red zone. They're ready to finish this off. Yeah. They bring in Grady Corbin. He got a lot of work last week there at that cheetah back. We'll see what he does here. So the Broncos have it first and goal at the nine. Can the racers buckle down here and either force a field goal or try to just get a stop altogether? We'll see what happens. Like a goal line set practically here at the nine. Yep. Handoff. Bouncing outside. Oh. Can he get the corner? He cannot. It was well defended there. Gillen trying to get around that edge. Bradford and Phillips both there. He got about a yard or two. That was good speed by both lines. Both defensive lines got over there. You saw Todd yeah. Smith just within inches of grabbing him from behind. We had a great angle of that. Of, yeah. Of, of both. <laughs> Bradford and Gillen just full speed. Who's going to get to that corner first? Yeah. There's a penalty there. I didn't see that. It's against the Broncos. That's holding. A, a hold. Yeah. So uh, a few yellow hankies kind of uh, influencing this drive a little bit. And Broncos are all the way back out to the 20. It's kind of nice seeing those going against the other team. That's great. I love it. <laughs> Bring it on if it's that's if that's right. the way. They're off that's the passer. Right. <laughs> yeah. Swallow yeah. so your whistle, maybe. Yeah. So it's going to be first down again, uh, back to the 20-yard line. And uh, first time we've seen this, five receivers set, nobody in the backfield with Heim. He'll take it and roll out to pass. Pressure in his face, a little delayed screen. We see Newcastle do a lot of this. Here's Gillen, makes one guy miss, cuts back. There's some space there. He's inside the 10. And pretty close to where he was before. It's going to be second and goal in about seven or so. Make call it eight. That's a good tackle. That was uh, a well-designed play. Yeah, Caden, yeah, very excellent play. That's one that Newcastle has caught several teams in this year. Yep, yep. With that one. That looked but like a Newcastle play. Excellent tackle there by number three, Phillips. Just grabbed him, would not let go. Was not able to get the pads on him to hit him, which I know what they want to do. But he did, kept him right there. Down at the eight-yard line, second and goal at the eight. Heim has it. He'll roll out to his right. Some pressure, will fire in the corner, got a man off the fingertips, incomplete. Heskew was there, forced him to make a perfect throw. It was a pretty darn good one, but Calderon yes. couldn't quite pull it in. It's going to be third down now. Boy, it's hard to believe the size of these receivers you can overthrow them. But that was just a, a three inches lower, and they'd be looking at a touchdown right It was one now. of those ones where, yeah, quarterback and receiver are both kind of upset. Yes. It, it could have been a better throw, but it was good enough. Calderon probably feels like he should have caught it. Yeah. But it it is so hard complete. to run when you're on the run like that. You can't set your feet. You can't let it go. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, you can't, you don't hang your head or think, oh, man, what a horrible pass. That's a great pass. Just one of those places. So third and goal at the eight. Chance for the racers here to try and buckle down. Heim is going to throw for it. Rolls out. Got pressure in his face. They're chasing. That's Nick's mm. right on him. He couldn't quite get him. Heim cuts back, makes a guy miss. Pushing forward. He's tackled down inside the five. And now here comes decision time for Coach Arthur and the Broncos. you got to think they go for this, right? Oh, they, I think they would have to. I mean, you do not want to start off the second quarter um, four, or four points low, but... We'll see what they do. Fourth and goal from the three. One minute to play in this opening quarter. We've had two possessions. The first quarter is almost done. It's been a lot of running the ball. This game is zooming along. 
But here comes a massive play in this ball game, and they're oh. going to line up and kick it. Wow. wow, I'm very surprised by this. Yeah, I, I was surprised too. That was that's what they fooled me by the huddling. Goal. By the way, why do you huddle on a on a field goal? Well, it goes through, and the field goal is good. Broncos are on the board. So racers, oh, that's a big win. That's a huge Hold win. Hold the Broncos out of the end zone, and it's seven to three with 38 seconds to play in the first quarter. We'll go ahead and stick here since okay. it's 38 seconds. I'll tell you right now, come the end of the game, that's going to be huge. It feels Holding like them right it, there. It feels like it. Yeah, it, it definitely does. That's a weird – I was surprised they didn't go for it. I am too, especially when I saw what Whisk out there. I thought, oh, okay, they're just going to give it to somebody, give it to Big Gilliland, let him lumber in. But they did it. They went down and kicked it. That's a surprise. I just think tonight there is not going to be any easy touchdowns at all, either team. Really good first quarter here for the racers. I mean, yes. Obviously, would you have rather given up zero? Obviously, but the fact that you buckled down and found a way to hold them to three points there, you like that. Now, what you'd obviously like to do now is get cash it back in going the other way and have yourself maybe a two-score lead. Keep your foot on the pedal in their neck. Oh, yeah. you got to keep oh, going. Yeah. Don't change up anything. Don't think, oh, good, we got a four-point win. This game's a long time. Even though it's going fast, holy cow, 40 seconds. I just now I looked at that. Know, first quarter is about, about uh, fin finito. But you've got to keep your foot on the throttle here. So Bradford and Bertie will be back to return the kick again as racers get the football back on a breezy but nice night at Gene Reed Field and Racer Stadium. Big game to end the regular season for a two. Broncos trying to win the district. Racers are in the playoffs but trying to help that seeding out. A win tie could do that. And again, like we said at the very top, even if it doesn't, it's a lot of momentum you can take into the playoffs if you find a way to beat the Broncos tonight. That's right. And uh, play spoiler to them trying to win the district. Kick is away and will be fielded. Oh, off the hands of Burchett. It's still loose. Get on it. And he does. And he'll go down. But if you're Newcastle, you're just kind of thankful he didn't turn that over. Oh. At the 15. And now flags are flying. Boy, that thing came shooting in. Who threw that sucker? You yeah. see that thing? That came out of the yeah. sky. That was a missile that was <laughs> coming was. in. Look, I remember yard darts. That's what it yes, kind of looked like. Yes. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a late hit, I'm afraid. A uh, late block out there. Uh, okay, uh, well, that's not going to be good for the racers. They'll no. be back inside their own 10 if that's the case. And we'll see what he calls after the play. Yeah, and that is. Oh. Oh, it's against Bethany. Wow. How about that? How about that? Well, see, I saw Burt getting up off of him. I thought maybe it was a late block. You know, they say block till the whistle. And so there's quite a few of those kind of late blocks you see come in. And well, I there you go. So that helps the racers wow. a lot after that, you know, botched, you know, muffed uh, return there. You were kind of back in your own end. Now they're all the way out near the 30. That's a, that's a big mistake by the Broncos. You know, Coach yeah. Arthur's got to be pulling his hair out yeah. on that one. It looks like he's right there beside the official getting some ideas what he needs to do. So it's first and 10 for Newcastle. Second possession here at the 30. Burt has it. Handoff goes to Bulls right the middle. Makes one guy miss. Boy, there was some there was some room there. If he could have made a one or two guys miss, he gets about four yards anyway. And that might do it on the quarter. Depends on how quickly they want to go here. But I'll tell you what, that looked like a collision course with uh, number 12, Wit, 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 Wicca? Wet Whiska. Wet Whiska, wow. <laughs> he was come flying in at the same speed as you saw Bolser running out, so there was going to be a collision. That's the end of the first quarter, just like that. A very fast one, and it has the racers in front, 7-3 to three over the Bethany Broncos. Second quarter next, right here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We come from different backgrounds with diverse interests and unique learning styles. Finding classes that fit your individual needs isn't a challenge at Cameron University. A small campus and dedicated faculty ensures there's always someone close by to guide you on your journey. Your success is our success. Your education is our mission. At Cameron University, you're not a number, you're part of the family. When I'm flying, I put my helmet on, my visor down, my mask up. You don't know who I am. Whether I'm African American, Asian American, Hispanic, white, male or female, you just know I'm an American Airman kicking your butt.
I'm General C.Q. Brown, Jr. Come join us. Back here at Racer Stadium, Josh Calloway, Billy Collier, Friday Night Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We got a good one here, Racers and Broncos. Second down play for the Racers. Bolser up the middle here doesn't go for much, and it'll be third down. And Wong coming up. Welcome you, anybody who has found us. And I imagine we probably have some, uh, maybe some Tigers fans, maybe some Lions fans who have stumbled upon us tonight. Absolutely. Looking in, seeing, pulling for the Racers, hoping that's for right. uh, the, op the door to be open. If, <laughs> if that's the case, we welcome you. Thank you for finding us. You have now found the one night Blanchard and total cheer for Newcastle. That's definitely happening right now as uh, the chance to win the district kind of lies on Newcastle finding a way to win tonight. Burt on the QB keeper here, not much there. It's going to be third down. He falls mm. forward, though. He's right at the sticks. Shoot. That should be a first down. I think we have a perfect angle of that. We're set up right about the 40. Right. I can a, set that's, my, a, that's a first down. Wow. Nice. I can set my right foot on that one. So, I mean, you job. couldn't make that any closer. They had to get to the 40, no. and the nose of the football is just barely lightly tapping past that 40-yard mark. And I'll tell you right now, Harold, number 30 out there, he's not somebody that easily moves for you. So for Burt to fight through him and get a first down, that's a great job. Yeah, that was really hard running by Jackson Burt to pick that up and get the first down. Big one there for the racer. Didn't want to go three out and give it right back. That was big. Here's first down. Handoff goes to Bolser up the middle, pushing forward, spinning ahead. He get about three or four. That was a big hit on Bolser. His helmet kind of got knocked yeah. askew. Kind of came off sideways there. It'll be a, about a four-yard pickup. Four. We're seeing right now with, with Newcastle that you're really liking in these first couple drives. They're falling forward in a big way. I mean, that's right. two plays in a row that they got two, three extra yards that you didn't think they were going to get after that initial contact. That's what you need uh, to win a game like this. Well, it's those little things. In a game like this, you've got to get the little things. Second down and six after the four-yard pickup for Bolser. Burt, handoff, back to him again. Keep running it. Not much there this time, though. That was well read. Oh, he fumbled it, but they just clogged up it by it. Charlie Toll. You think the ball came out? I didn't see that. Yeah, the ball came out, but it looks like it got covered up. It looked like. Yeah, it's still racers' ball. So yeah. Third down. Whew. Thank our second quarter sponsor here, Contemporary Family Dentistry. Their mission is to deliver quality dentistry and cultivate relationships by providing big practice benefits with a little practice feel. Call them today and set up an appointment. 405-387. 9300 Contemporary Family Dentistry, our second quarter sponsor on the Oakland Sports Network. Third down and six. Can they pick up another one? Burt back to pass. Got all day over the middle. Shanuel, good catch. Oh, it oh, came out late and it's incomplete. Mm. That was almost a superb catch by a Shanuel, yeah. but the hit in the back jarred it loose. And it goes incomplete. Now you have fourth down on your own side of the 50. Tough spot here for Coach Brickman. Yeah, he was hit there by big, big number seven, Heim, right there. Just enough to jar it loose. So let's and see what they do. It looks yeah, like they're going Bert's for still it. still out there. Obviously, you see quarterbacks punt it from time to time. He's not that far back, though. They might be running this or maybe hoping for an offside. Yeah. It's wondering for a plus five play there. It's fourth down and six. So an offside wouldn't get you the first, but obviously would make it a whole heck of a lot easier. Now he moved back, he's going to punt this. And he'll get wow. it. Had some pressure in his face, so he had to just kind of get rid of it. Need a lucky bounce here. Oh, he got some. And that's going to go for a while. That's a fortunate that's bounce for the Racers. It'll roll down run. inside the 20, maybe down at about the 18. Down. And that's where the Broncos Good set time. up. So the Broncos defense did what it had to do. Couldn't afford to go down two scores on the road. They buckled down and get a stop. And now the uh, Heim led Broncos offense comes back out. That was an excellent punt. I mean, there were airplanes coming in going, what on earth? That was so high. There was a lot of pressure in his face. Yes. You know, uh, to uh, try and it, he, he played it safe there. He booted it and it yeah. ended up working out. He got the wind helped him. Wind's blowing that direction. Got a nice roll. But well, uh, and with it that height, he got a lot of bounce out of it, yeah, too. Yeah, he did. So. He did. So first and 10 at the 18 is where Bethany will set up. First drive ended in a field goal from inside the five. Was a little surprised to see that. So trickeration here ends up back in the hands of Heim. That wasn't Heim who took the snap. That was 18. Carter Thomas, I believe. Wow. And then he handed it off to Heim. <laughs> That's what we said right at the top. This guy yeah. will line up everywhere. See, now he's split out wide uh, at the, re the receiver spot. 
they have lots of different ways they use they do Taylor Hyme he's kind of a, a little bit of a, of a Taysom Hill ish with the Saints kind of an idea like just kind of wherever you put them make it happen kind of a thing second down and five Handoff here will go to Gill and bounce outside. Nothing there. Phillips puts him there down. There you go. Racers clog that up. He loses like three yards. Here comes third and long. That was really well read and a good tackle by Caden Phillips. That was just great speed. The defensive end and the receivers have got to keep him inside. Make him stay inside. Don't give him that corner. Phillips did a great job of cutting that off. I don't know if you've noticed, but they got, uh, and I'm going to make sure I say it right, what Wiska is quarterbacking right now. Yeah, him and Heim kind of almost uh, almost a two QB system. Right. In a way, yeah, you're right. Well, Wiska, number 12, is the one taking the snaps. He's also a senior. Third down and six. Chance for the Rangers to get a really quick three and out. That'd be big. But Wiska fires out in the flat, passes high and caught. Mm. That's a first down. Really well done by Woods Harrell. Great catch. That, that was, was really close three. to being... Knocked away or just not? I mean, it was high. That ball had some steam on it, and Harold just snagged that. Good catch. And that was a lot of what I saw last week they had against Tuttles. A lot of those jumping high catches. Great hands. I mean, it just stopped the rotation immediately when they hit their hands. So, so great a, catch. It's a first down to the 29-yard line. So the Broncos pick it up and keep the chains moving, trying to, you know, obviously maybe take the lead here if they can. Got a long way to go, though, just on the 29-yard line. Seven and a half to play in the second quarter. We're zipping right through this thing. Oh, we got whistles right on cue. Some whistles here. <laughs> and I think we got a timeout here taken by the Broncos. We'll go ahead and take one too. 7.30 to play in the first quarter. Racers lead the Broncos 7-3 to three on the Oklahoma Sports Network. This is Friday Night Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Team up with Pioneer iVideo and start streaming the most popular TV shows and movies from your favorite devices today. Download the iVideo app and start watching anywhere in your home using Pioneer Internet. Each package includes free high definition and cloud DVR features like video on demand, restart TV, and replay TV, just in case you forget to record a program. Visit gopioneer.com for more details and compatible devices. Some restrictions apply. Back here at Racer Stadium, Josh Calloway, Billy Collier on a Friday night to end the, uh, I, I've said Friday. I think, this, I, th I, think I said it Friday a couple times. I just realized that. We Thursday knew we night, that. Yeah, we knew. Thursday night football. This game is supposed to be on Friday tomorrow, but moved up a day because of inclement weather is coming in. Although it looks like it may stay early enough in the day tomorrow with the games that are tomorrow will be okay. But played it safe tonight. Passing the flat here is caught. In strike, Gillen first down across the 40. And the Broncos on the move a little bit here. Yeah, they're starting to get some little momentum. You're starting to see them kind of move, doing what they usually do, what I saw a lot in video. Um, just those passes out in the flats, the handoffs going around the end. Um, time for the adjustment. These two coaches making adjustments. It's time for Newcastle to adjust back. First down and 10 up to the 40 after that first down pass. And still wet Wiska. Heim is out there, though. He's split out wide at the top, so they're just working with Heim as a receiver right now. Here's Gillen on the run again. That was well read. Good defense there. They got a flag. Yeah, there is right at the bottom. We'll see what the penalty marker is here. About a two-yard pickup. I think it's going to be a hold against them. You saw uh, Carl come in. He had his kind of arms flailing up, usually what they do when they're getting held. So I think that's going to back him up, Tim. Yeah, holding's the call right down there. So, All right, so a hold against the Broncos. They'll take that if you're in Newcastle. Wow, and it happened in the backfield. That took them back 13 yards. That's yeah. first and 23. That's going to be a significant penalty for sure. Back to about the 27 or so. They got to get up to the midfield. Yeah, you're right, 23. Wow. Yeah. Yeesh. Yeah, yeesh. <laughs> First down and 23 from the 27. This is still Wet Whiska. Heim is in there. He's at the top. Looks like it's Wet Whiska, at least for this drive. Maybe moving forward. A little delayed screen Ooh, here. Incomplete. It. Put it right at the feet there. A call to Rome. Couldn't quite scoop it. 
And an incomplete pass, and it'll be second down and a lot. Yeah, I think that was the called play. They were trying to draw in Newcastle so they could get that there in the flat. Well, their most successful yeah. offensive play really was that kind of delayed screen on the first drive. Other than that, it's been a lot of kind of chipping away. Right. It hasn't been the, it hasn't been the big play. Just a methodical yeah, eight yards yeah. here, seven yards there, yeah. Which doesn't really uh, work in your favor when you're looking at second and 23, necessarily. Here's what Wiska rolls out, some pressure. He'll fire, got a man, it's caught. Into traffic there, that's Woods Harrell again. Or no, excuse me, that's 20, which is White Geisler, the sophomore. Still got a long way to go here, though. That was about a nine yard pickup or so. This is up a third down and 14, 13. Great defense there by Rice. He was right there when the ball hit him in the in the hands, took him right down right where he caught it, so no yards after catch. So that was a good good deed and brings up three behind the sticks. Third down and 13 here. Big chance for the racers to get off the field. You got four receivers, three at the bottom, one up at the top is Heim. Gillen rolls, uh, he bounces outside. Wet Whiska's gonna take off. He's got some room here, but the racers crash down on him. Lowers the shoulder, that was a truck stick from Wet Whiska, but he's still five yards shy of the marker, and it's gonna be a fourth down coming up. Yeah, that was a good run, boy, good powerful hit there <laughs> yeah. by Wet Whiska. Uh, too bad it was all for naught, uh, because he hit him and then got hit by the second guy, knocked out of bounds. Yeah, that but was a great job. Whenever he's a he, tough tackle. Whenever he took off, it, it felt like, oh, there's room there, but the race did a good job down, crashing down on that, limiting his space, and now you're gonna have fourth down and five, and. We'll see what Coach Arthur likes to do from a pretty close, similar area looks of like the field. Kick. And it looks like they are going to go ahead and punt this. It's twice now that Coach Arthur's been very conservative. Right. Uh -oh. Rolls out. Is it a fake? No. Thought about it. He'll kick it. That's not uh -oh. a good punt at all. That's going to yeah. go out of bounds. Racers are going to have this at about the 45 or so. That's what it looks like. Wow. Oh, this is a poor spot. Yeah. Oh, uh, yikes. Yeah, and fans are giving it to him there. <laughs> It, he, Bradford caught that out of bounds at about the 40. He yeah. caught it out of bounds. So that means it crossed at about the 45. It definitely should be the 38, but what can you do? Yeah. It, it's, it was a lot easier for us to see the angle from up high. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll just, we'll just assume that. But you got yeah, to base gotta it off the it. fact that it landed. Yeah. It wasn't even quite the 40-yard line where it landed. So yeah. obviously it didn't go out of bounds inside the 40. So. Uh, Bethany catches a break. Newcastle gets uh, hurt a little bit there. Wow. But still not a great punt even with that. No. And the Racers have it first and 10 after 38 early. line. Still only netted about 15 yards or so, 20 at most. Burt fires out. Here's Logan on a little bubble screen. This has been really effective. That's what they got the touchdown on earlier. And that goes for about five yards on first down. That's a good job. Good job. Tell you what, um, Bobby Burrell, number 35 in there, one of the things I've seen in him this year is he has just turned up the blocking. He's yeah. had a few really good catches, especially through the middle, but he has blocked and blocked and blocked. And yeah. You've got to have it for those guys that know what their role is on the team and what they're supposed to do. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned it, yeah, because uh, it's not the most glamorous thing to do to be blocking, but it, it helps big time, obviously. you got to have that. Bradford bounce outside, not much there at all. No. And it'll be third down. I still like that they have the three running backs, and he's the one that's shiftiest. Uh, I think they need to maybe try and shift him a little bit more. Also, it's really difficult on the offensive line. Now you got a different style of runner, yeah. and so they're having to change their blocking schemes and kind of having to rethink this stuff. Third down and four here for Newcastle, trying to keep this drive moving, get some more points up on the board. Oh, oh got a man to jump. That's going to be a first down. Yeah. Hard count kills. We've seen that a lot this year. We taught, I mean, going all the way back to that scrimmage against Clinton, right. it's been all season of the hard count being a weapon for Newcastle. And you saw it right there, results in a first down. Yeah, I do I do want to, if coaches are listening, put this in the playbook as the plus five. <laughs> Just tell them, hey, we're going to run the plus five. It feels like you can almost, you don't want to say get it whenever you want, but kind of. Yeah. I mean, they can get it when they want. First and 10 up to the Newcastle 49. Bradford run up the middle here, got some space, and he'll get about two or three. That's a good job. That was a good fake. It was the first time I've really seen Burt really go with the fake uh, to pass it out there just to slow up those backs just a touch. And so let's see what they do here. It looks like Bradford's staying in there. 
It's been pretty much all bolster uh, so far. It's only a third drive. Right. First half is zoomed right by, but getting Bradford in there with the fresh legs obviously plays defense as well. Second seven. Bradford has it. Run up the middle here, pushing forward, keeping those legs. Oh. Turn it, ball came out, and the Broncos have got it. A turnover, mm. and Bethany, first really big swing play potentially of this game goes to the Broncos. They fumble and a turnover. Uh, yeah, you don't like that, especially with 424 left in the half. Yeah. But that's just a yeah. tough break. Yeah, because you're break. looking at that for Newcastle thinking we got the momentum, we're working that clock, trying to get to half, maybe score some more points, but obviously a big turnover there. Didn't see exactly how it happened. Just all of a sudden the ball game shooting out, yeah. and the Broncos get a massive turnover and have it first and 10 on their own 48-yard line with obviously plenty of time. Yeah, it was like popcorn, and then you got – T.J. Bradford, he's going out there to line up right there against Harold. So first and 10 for the Broncos at the 48. Big opportunity for Bethany. Right before the half, this is Heim back in a quarterback. Handoff, Gillen up the middle, not much there. He'll run forward for about three. Yeah, boy, I tell you what, number 20 there, Young. He's having him a great defensive game. And every time you've seen the football, you've seen him around it. Yeah. So, and he's hitting. He's one of those guys, uh, I think he's getting to the point where uh, – Gilliland's not looking forward to seeing number 20 come at him. Under four minutes to play here in the first half. Heim fires out in the flat pass. It is knocked away. Calderon had a shot at it, but flying in, who else? Caden Phillips jarred that ball loose. Now you have a third and long coming up. He was he read that route really well. Oh, he was perfectly. Happy. And he's got great close-up speed. I mean, he can close in on them and get there pretty fast. He was about four to five yards away, came in and closed up that gap. So he knocks it loose, it's third down, and what an opportunity this is for Newcastle defensively after that tough turnover to come right out, get a quick three and out would be huge. Gillen splits out, Heim keeps it, pushing up the middle here, running hard, falls forward. It's gonna be really close, I think he got it. It's gonna be real, real close, but I think he got it, and he did. First down for Heim, move the sticks, didn't get it by much. But he just got enough. The, he needed all six foot five of his yes, frame right. on that one. And That's it's right. First down for the Broncos. It was almost like that uh, photo finish. His head just past the line there. Yep. So up to the 42. First down for Bethany. Big one there. Heim rolls out to pass. He'll fire here down the sideline. Pass is caught. Inbounds. What a catch. Wow. Just inside the 25 yard line. Big time play there. I think that was Harold 30 who came up with it. Yeah, that was a great catch. I, it was one of those ones you thought, well, maybe there's a chance for an interception, but yeah. he went up and just those solid hands of theirs. Just a jump ball. Pulled it in. Down to the 24. Broncos are on the move here. Ooh, might have had a couple guys leaning, and they did. Yep. Good catch by the official at the bottom there. Had a couple of guys just kind of get going a little bit early. Official at the bottom saw it and flagged it. It's going to be a five-year penalty against the Broncos. Yeah, I think they're getting excited to get into that end zone. I wonder how many games this uh, year, this season, they've made it to halftime without a touchdown. I'm hoping it, it will be, be right now. Many. The low point scoring of the year for them was last week against Blanchard when they scored 21 in that win. But besides that, the lowest, 37. I mean, this team right. scores points. Yeah, so that's just great when you're talking about Newcastle defense. Uh, just keep the offense them out. too for short yeah. the game. Yeah. yeah, so just a great job. Some some adjustments to make on, and I think we'll get a few more touchdowns on them hopefully. But if they can keep them out of the end zone in the next 325, that would be a huge. Oh, yeah, they're gonna wave it off. I'm I'm surprised by that. Me too. Uh, the receivers at the bottom of the screen were definitely leaning and, and left a hair early. Coach Brickman got his explanation, and uh, that's that's that. He didn't blow his top so maybe yeah. it was a satisfactory explanation but but it also worked to shut down the mo the momentum yeah a little bit yeah first attempt 24. Heim checks with his sideline he'll come up and relay some info to his guys up front Heim got all day gonna fire down the middle here looking for a man Burgess down there oh, oh what a catch Wow. Touchdown, Broncos. That was spectacular. That was a good catch. Excellent catch there. Woods Harrell again. My goodness. 
And what's really tough is you had Burchett right there in place, and it almost looked like he got pushed down and out of the way for that. But a good catch, a good touchdown. Yeah, there was some jockeying in the end zone. Race was. were hoping for maybe an offensive PI, but officials let it go, and Harold does a great job coming back to the ball and, and twice on throws that weren't great from high. Kind of got caught up in the wind and just made a play on the football. So the Broncos jump in front for the first time. Extra point. Didn't have a lot of giddy up on it, but it goes through. And the Broncos lead it 10-7 with 3.15 to play in the first half. Racer offense needs a response. We'll see what they do next right here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. When it comes to your home, you need someone that you can trust to keep it safe and protected for you and your family. Vesta Foundation Solutions is your local, family-owned company that has helped many homeowners fix and protect their homes. Our engineered solutions can take care of all of your foundation repair, basement waterproofing, concrete leveling, and dirt crawl space repair needs. We take pride in getting the job done right, and you'll always be protected with up to a 75-year warranty. Contact us today for a free estimate. Back to Racer Stadium, Josh Calloway, Billy Collier with you on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Broncos jump in front. Taylor Heim drops into the end zone. Good adjustment by Woods. Harrell pulls in the touchdown. And the Broncos have their first lead, 10-7 on top of the Racers. A little pooch kick again here will be fair caught by Jarko at the 35. Racers still certainly with plenty of time to try and get down and, if not take the lead, at least tie this game. Right. Well, this is one of those times you're really glad to have somebody there you know, like uh, Batchelder. Because if you look at this area at the 35, if they go, what, 45 yards, 50 yards, that's yeah, within his range. And yeah, you got the wind at your back going this direction that's true. as well. So got that working in your favor also. First and 10 at the 35. That's where Newcastle sets up. Big drive here before half because obviously remember Broncos get the ball to start the third quarter as well. Bolster on the carry here. Ooh, big hit there, Laid. That was well done. That's the other Gillen, Jack Gillen, coming and laying that pop. Two-yard game. I wonder what their house is like at holidays. All three of them playing yeah. football. Yeah, I'm sure when they were kids, there was a lot of rough yeah. housing going on. I bet this was said a lot. Go outside. <laughs> 100%. And <laughs> maybe how they got so good. 100%. Two-yard game, second down and eight. Bird takes the snap, fake the handoff to Bolster, back to pass. Steps up, he'll fire pass, caught by Randy Nix inside the 45, down to That's midfield. That was a dart Randy of a pass Nix by Burt, and nice all-hands grab field, by Burt Randy Nix. That was a great pass. There wasn't a lot of loop in it. It didn't take much time to get to him. He got right there, and, of course, they're lining up and getting ready to go, getting the ball set, getting down the field. Wind is continuing to just whip here through Racer Stadium. Low snap, Burt does a good job hanging with it, fires, and it'll go incomplete. Well, it's kind of yeah. partially just a throwaway, which is... Smart move by uh, Burt, you know, first down. down. Yeah, you right. lose the snap. Let's not make it, let's not make matters worse. Let's get rid of that ball and live to fight another day. Don't overthink it. Yeah. No, that you drop the ball, come up with it, put it where they're not, and live, like you said, live to fight another day. So second down and 10 coming up. Stick with us at the half. Bill and I will give our first half thoughts. We'll let the bands perform here on this senior night final home game of the season. And we'll get ready for the second half of action. What's well, been oh. a fun game. Snap goes off of Burt's hands. It's on the turf. Bolser and a couple of Broncos battling for it. And Bethany's got ah. it again. Another turnover. Backbreaker. Mm. Getting on it there was Jordan Strotter, number 22. The high snap went off the hands of Burt. Took a funny hop. And the Broncos come up with another huge turnover. Wow. That was huge. Enormous. Yeah, and really, I don't know what happened. I mean, it didn't look like anything really yeah. to mess them up. Just a couple, a, of a little high and a little, little bit of steam on it. Couldn't quite pull it in, and then it just took a really unfortunate bounce. It kind of shot back toward the line. So a huge turnover, and the Broncos got a chance to get a big score here. Went Wiska, run here to Gillen. Good job by the Racers following that up. 
And if you're Newcastle right now, you got to find a way to keep the Broncos out of the end zone. Uh, you uh, you got to keep them from making a first down. If they make a first down, they can run this baby out. Well, that's okay. I mean, you can live with that, but don't go down 17-7. Uh, you get to have 10-7, you're still right in it. You're that's fine. That's true. That's true. But that's probably the adrenaline in me coming out going, no. Second down and 10. Four receivers set. Heim is up there at the top for Wet Wiska, the quarterback here for, Bron for the Broncos. Him and Heim kind of going back and forth here. Fires out. This is going to be caught. Big hit. Phillips puts him right into the earth. As Geisler caught that, had nowhere to go. Number three was all over him. It's going to be third down and long coming up. Phillips watched that the whole way. His hardest part of that play was just getting off the block there. And he saw it coming. It was right there. Just dropped him. So another big opportunity for the Racers defensively as a third down and 10 coming up with a buck 17 and counting to play in this first quarter. Bethany smartly kind of slow playing it, saying, hey, let's make this the last drive of the half. Certainly makes sense. Five wide for Wet Wiska. Third and 10. Back to pass. Might have got away with a hold there. Logan chasing, gets him around the foot. Wesker will have to fire. And it goes out of bounds, incomplete. And the Racers defense, big time, steps up after that turnover and forces a three and out. That was a really, really good job. Yeah, huge, and stopped the ball, stopped the uh, the clock on that last play with throwing it out of bounds, incomplete. Yeah. Stopped it with 52 seconds. So now let's see how fast they can get up this field. They got all three timeouts. Yeah. So let's see what they can do. Yeah, with Batchelder's legs certainly feel like there's some potential to maybe try and knot this thing back up. We'll see how uh, aggressive Jeff Brickman is on the ensuing drive here may very well depend on what happens on this punt. Fourth and 10, Calderon boots it. Oh, crushed it. It's gonna go with the 15 and roll. Shanuel will just dive on it to kill it. And they're all the way inside their own 10. So yeah. the at the 40, uh, 44 Daniel. seconds, excuse me. You're at your Ready own eight, it looks like. Yeah, I really conflicted. What do you do in this situation? I'd probably you? play it safe. I mean, you have to win. Uh, I don't. I mean, I don't know. It's a little dicey. Maybe take one shot, see if you can't get a lot of yardage, and then maybe you roll from there. But well, when you look at their cornerbacks, are also their receivers. Um, looks like one of them is also the quarterback. I don't know if you just run it, run out the clock, especially after two turnovers and a half. So at the eight, first and ten, Burt. They'll just fire out in, the, in a little screen here to Logan. Got some room there. Makes a couple guys miss. He'll be tackled down about the 13. And I think they're going to let the clock roll. That's about what I thought. You do something yeah. like that, see if he can't pop it for 20 yards. If he does, you get up and roll. If not, you live with it, and you uh, let that clock tick down. And that seems to be the way this is heading. Yeah, they're not they hurrying. They don't have to snap it. Play clock is about three or four seconds ahead of the game clock. Looks like they might run one more play at least, though. They will. Burt fires out. Caught by Logan. Makes one guy miss. Bounce outside. And he's wrangled down about the 25 with three seconds wow. on the clock. So we'll have one more play here before heading wow. to the locker rooms. Uh. It's amazing. I thought they'd run a play and then just run out the clock, play it safe, but it looks like they're trying to get up here and do something. I don't yeah, know I'm what their surprised. chances are. Yeah, I'm a little surprised by, uh, by that because you, you, know, so you have all your timeouts, didn't use them. Maybe just seeing if you can't get lucky with one, I guess. And now they'll play it safe and run it with Bolster up the middle. Got yeah. some room. Good run by Bolster, but Excellent. obviously Bethany was willing to give that up just didn't want to have any big plays That's right. but a 10-yard run for Bolser and that closes out the first half a really fast really competitive first 24 minutes where we're probably in for some twists and turns in the second half of this one after two quarters it's the Broncos 10 the racers 7 looks like a timeout Bill and I will come back wrap up the first half then we'll step aside and let the bands do their thing here at Racer Stadium stick with us halftime show up next right here on the Oklahoma Sports Network this is Friday Night Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We fight the battles no one hears about. We drop into the middle of firefights to rescue others. And act as one-man air traffic control towers. We're the ones who go before all others.
join the fight. At CFD, our mission is to deliver quality dentistry by providing big practice benefits with a little practice feel. Since 2008, we've updated our look, technology, and have added new smiles to our tenured staff to better care for you right here at home. Convenience for you is one of our biggest goals, and we often provide same-day treatment to minimize your time off work. We are open Monday through Friday to serve you. Visit cfdok.com for details. We look forward to seeing you at our big little practice. All right, back here at Racer Stadium, Josh Calloway, Billy Collier. We're at the Mason half. Kelly. The Bethany Broncos lead the Newcastle Racers 10-7 at the end of 24 minutes. Really Walker fast Brooks. first half. Each team only had the ball a few times. It zipped That's right through. Matthews. Both teams with really good first Ryder drives. Frank. Racers finished there as Bethany Brooks had to settle for a field goal, but Broncos get a turnover on uh, T.J. Bradford's fumble, punched in for a touchdown. Racers defense did a good job to buckle down and hold it there, but obviously at the half, you're looking at a three-point deficit. Certainly, you know, you're right there, it's three points, but you would have liked to end that half a little better. You're right, I think so. I tell you what, the biggest difference in this game between Bethany and Newcastle are the two fumbles. You take away those two fumbles, continue those drives, we may be looking at a seven to three halftime right now. Um, you cleaning that up, I know they're gonna make adjustments to do some things in here. I think one of the things that I'm seeing is, uh, you know, we talked about, oh, Bethany, you know, they beat Blanchard and they're a good team and all this. I think we're looking at a Newcastle team that's showing we can keep up with any of them. We can play just as good of them. It's the small things that just kind of keep catching them. Absolutely. Um, you know, anything can uh, happen. I think the second half is going to be very competitive and uh, could, go, could go either way, obviously. I mean, Absolutely. It's a game, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's – the difference between these two teams through two quarters is, you know, razor minimal. Thin. So, uh, right, should be a fun second half. Looking forward to seeing how this one shakes out. That's for sure. Broncos hold a 10-7 lead over the Racers after 24 minutes. Billy and I will step aside now. We'll let the bands perform here at Racer Stadium Senior Night, and then we'll come back and uh, we'll rejoin you in about eh, 20 minutes or so, and we'll set the scene for the second half, and we'll dive into the third quarter. All right, let's go. Let's I'm do it. Let the bands do their thing. All right, we'll step aside. Stick with us. Stream's not going anywhere. Hang out for 20 minutes. Watch the bands. We'll be back for the second half here in about 20 minutes or so. runs in the hills of California, like rivers of shimmering rock. I will be packing my bags to seek my fortune, among many others of like mine. I will be departing on the morrow. I wish you well, and will return as soon as I have found sufficient wealth to return home.
have been lucky to maintain good health. I am, however, finding this venture to be far more disappointing than I hoped. I mined from dawn until dusk, day after day, in hopes that the next broken stone will result in fortune. For many months, I've only encountered the cold gray stone broken from the earth. A great many persons are dissatisfied with this land and are returning home as fast as possible, but I will remain in the final hope of what lies ahead.
like to thank their seniors for their hard work and dedication over the past four years. Congratulations on a fantastic high school marching band career. Please join us in thanking seniors Morgan Bigham, Kaylee Estrada, Isaac Gately, Jefferson Hannon, Tatum Housley, and Trinity Holsey.
dentistry by providing big practice benefits with a little practice feel. Since 2008, we've updated our look, technology, and have added new smiles to our tenured staff to better care for you right here at home. Convenience for you is one of our biggest goals, and we often provide same-day treatment to minimize your time off work. We are open Monday through Friday to serve you. Visit cfdok.com for details. We look forward to seeing you at our big little practice. Sidelined by surgery, illness, injury? Valor Physical Therapy can help. At Valor PT, our skilled therapists create a rehabilitation program individualized for you with education and encouragement each step of the way. Whether it's sports or the activities of life, let Valor get you back in the game. Start now at 405-265-6449. No referral needed. Mention Oklahoma Sports Network and get a free t-shirt at your first appointment. It's no secret that life is busy and you have a million things on your to-do list. Here at Community Bank of Oklahoma, we've made banking simple again. We can help you get to the important things in life, like the big game tonight. We do all the heavy lifting so you don't have to. Race towards us at Community Bank of Oklahoma because we wouldn't be a community without you. Back here at Racer Stadium, just about ready to start the second half of action. Bethany Broncos lead the Newcastle Racers 10-7. Give you a few scores here real quick. Josh Calloway, Billy Collier with you. So OSSAA, we mentioned there was a lot of late changes, games moving from Thursday to Friday, or Friday to Thursday, I should say. So we weren't sure. OSSAA in pregame still had Tuttle and Blanchard is playing tomorrow, but we got scores. So obviously they're playing right now. <laughs> Um, not looking good for the racers on either front no. right now. Blanchard leads to comes at the half 28 to 6. And Tuttle leads class in 41 nil. Mm. So neither one of those is shaping up as you'd want right now. Still time to go. Still play to be still action. And uh, Newcastle doesn't actually, you know, they do. I mean, you need Blanchard to lose. Uh, but you need him to lose. You wanted to catch him in the point. So I don't know. It, We'll let the second half play out, but we should uh, have a very good idea, if not just know completely, um, where Newcastle is headed next week uh, once this game is all said and done. Uh, so there you have that. A few other scores real quick. Carol, I'll get ready. Cash is leading Chickasha 22-7. That's on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Bulldogs win that. They're in the playoffs. So uh, shout-out to the Cash crew. Hopefully they can hang on in that one. Other game in 4A2, Hera. That rough year for Bridge Creek. Hera 21-0 on top of Bridge Creek. Looks like the Panthers might be able to end their year with a win, and the Bobcats would go winless in district play if that holds. Elk City, who we'll likely see next week in the playoffs, leading John Marshall 26-6 in that one. Likely where we're headed next, uh, next Friday yep. night. Looking forward to that, um, of course. And elsewhere, a lot of games tomorrow. Uh, as well. Those are kind of the more the most pertinent scores uh, as of now. So Blanchard leading Tecumseh 28-6. That's kind of the big one right now. Uh, right. Racers need the Savages to mount a comeback if they want to try and climb up the district standings. So by race for the second half, Billy, what a what, quick key here for Newcastle in the second half. Well, I think they ha need to maybe uh, disguise some things on offense, maybe shake it up just a touch. They're doing really good establishing the run, which is something we said at the first of the game. They're doing very well with that. Um, maybe open it up just a little bit, see what they can do. This is a good Bethany team. On defense, I think they need to just stay right at it. None of The scores, the touchdown, well, it was great coverage. Um, they've been doing a great job. I think they're doing good. They'll continue doing good. On offense, I'd like to see, uh, see them open up the playbook just a touch. 
So here we go. Batchelder boots it away, and we're off and running in the second half. Ball's on the turf. It was muffed, but I think Bethany might have caught a break here and got it back. They did. That was nearly a massive <laughs> momentum swing right wow. out of the locker room. But the Broncos get on it, and so Racer's defense will head out there. This is a big drive, obviously, to start Huge. this second half. You don't want to come out and uh, go down two scores, obviously. You want to try and get that momentum back on your side. So a big drive to start this second half with Taylor Heim leading the charge here at quarterback for the Broncos. Yeah, this is huge. They need to take this away. From under center, he hands off to Gilliland. I don't know how he managed to spin around and make that hit. That was, let's say that's 26 for the racers, which is Mr. Brady Rice on the tackle there. About a no gain, second down and long coming up. Yeah, that was good, good. Uh, they shut that hole down. He saw a hole went for it. They shut it down pretty fast. Looks like uh, half a yard at the most, if not down to the same marker they were at. Appreciate you finding us, however you did, on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Josh Calloway, Billy Collier, Newcastle, and Bethany. Kind of a weird weather night. It's it's almost like sticky out here or right. something. Second down here, Heim rolls out. Pressure in his face. That was Lovejoy chasing him. He forced that throw away. And now the racers got an opportunity here. It'll be third down, although I maybe spoke a little too soon. There's a flag down. It's in kind of a holdville, as hold you like bill, to say. Yeah. So it looks like I think they'd probably decline, at least Billy's opinion. I'd decline it. You have to think about it for sure. Third and 10 or second and 20. It looks like they're taking it. Mm -hmm. So they're taking it. Yeah. I guess it'd be third and 10. So Third and 10 or second and 20. I mean, tonight Newcastle has been really good. It's going to be even more than second and 20. That's, that's wow. a lot. We'll get the exact measurement here. It's like 22 maybe. Man. But Newcastle is going to say has been really good tonight at not allowing the big play. I mean, you had the touchdown, I guess, was kind of a jump ball. But for the most part, you're feeling pretty good that you can keep them from 22 yards in two plays. So we'll see what they do. Second down. Passing the flat here oh. is incomplete. They're saying it was incomplete. Racer faithful hoping for uh, that to be backwards. Couldn't really tell from where we're seated. Well, I'm, I'm with the faithful. It looked like it came back to about the 22, 21-yard line. The wind line. is blowing that way, so it's possible yeah. that it kind of just pushed it. They were fighting over it over about the 20-yard line. That would be a minus five on them. So. And now if you're Bethany, you're, you're almost Coach John Arthur. You're probably playing it pretty safe here. I mean, yeah. third and 22, the way the balls are kind of getting caught up in that wind right now, you don't want to push your luck too much here. Yeah, and you got Jarko back here about 15 yards That's off the That's exactly ball. what they do. It's going to be a QB run with Heim. He's got nowhere to go. He's bottled up. Another big hit laid in there. Phillips among the fray along with Knicks. And I saw Carl Young in there as well. And the racer defense does exactly what they need to do, come right out and force a three and out. Yeah, in fact, not only did they not get any yards, they lost 12 yards, yeah, 13 like yards. That. And they're punting into the wind now. So the yes. racers have got an opportunity here to find themselves with some really good field position depending on what happens on this punt. That was a great defensive defensive series right there. Oh, yeah, big time. So, Calderon will do the honors and boot this away to Jackson Shanuel back. Kind of wobbly, it'll go out of bounds right at about the 45. Or the 40. 40 46 <laughs> that time. That time Newcastle got a little bit of the benefit of there the spot. There you go. Earlier they were kind of on the other side of it. That time it went more in their favor. So Racers will set up on their own 46. First and 10. I think our third quarter sponsor here as the offense gets out there. Chasing Ellie Boutique. They have so many amazing gifts and they offer free gift wrapping as well. Chasing Ellie Boutique now with two locations. Check them out in Newcastle. 2191 North Main. And make sure to check out their latest fa fashions on their Facebook page. Chasing Ellie Boutique. First and 10 at the 46. Good field position for the Racers. Here is uh, Corbin on the carry. And how about that first carry of the day? It goes for nine yards and nearing a first down. Welcome what? to the game, Mr. Corbin. That's right. He comes in and kind of wears him out. And uh, I figured he'd see some time tonight as they started getting a little tired. I didn't know we'd see it this soon, but that was a good run. They almost had to just throw him down by his head. It's been kind of interesting time because it was a lot of bolster early, almost exclusively. Then it was Bradford for a while. Now you're seeing Corbin. Mm -hmm. Coach Rickman's got a lot of guys he can go to, kind of keeping the defense on their toes Ooh. a little bit. And there's that. Three five, and it's going to result in another first down. Oh, sorry. Oh man, they, they just got. I think he could see it in them right there. One of the guys jumped before he even said anything. 
So I think he just went with it and got him to jump. What is, is it Bird, is it Brickman? What's the secret? How do they do this every single week? The like, ability to get so many guys off sides, it's, I've never seen anything like it. Right. Every week, I mean, every week. I think they go at such a pace that the defense just kind of gets in that rhythm and then they throw that in and it just really messes up the rhythm. First and 10 at the 40, Burt. Hand off here up the middle. This is Corbin again, pushing forward inside there. the 35. Ready, Those fresh 35. legs are churning and the racers are on the move right here. Yeah, looking good, looking yeah, real good, strong run. Second and four at the 34, up quickly, Burt. Back to Corbin, keep feeding him between the tackles, rushing four. That's another first down inside the 30. Yeah, and that's just a great job of coaching. You really got to give it to Brigman and his coaches. Just such a change of pace. They are going really fast right now. First and 10 at the 28. Burt fakes it. He keeps it. There's a lot of room on that right side. He got a flag that may wipe this out, though. He's down right at about the 20. But a flag back behind the play may wipe it out. Looks like it's going to. They, they had target practice there at uh, Mr. Nick's throwing it at him. <laughs> but uh, golly, man, that was a great play right there. Great fake. It really brought everybody in. 9-19 to play in this third quarter. It's a tough penalty here potentially going to go against Newcastle. Looks like it's going to. I haven't seen an official signal just yet. Good catch by Gene Reed on the PA. There's two flags down. It might be for the same penalty. And it was two against the offense. Wow. It'll be a couple of holds and racers get backed up. Well, we really got fortunate. A lot of times when that happens, there's two holding penalties. There's one that's way back and one that's way up. And so they usually take the one that's back to lose more yardage. Fortunately, those are both about on the same yard line. Good traveling party, by the way, for Bethany tonight. They are really jam-packed over on their side of Racer Stadium. Bethany, not that far from here. Good uh, good program, obviously. You expect yeah. them to make the trip, and they did. Good to see. Yeah, it, they're loud over there, you, even yeah. through the headphones. Yeah. You're hearing them cheering on and, and trying to be disruptive. Well, Blanchard and Tecumseh are putting the pressure on Bethany to uh, win this game tonight. If the Broncos win, it'll come down to points. If they lose, they're not going to win the district. It's going to come down to Blanchard to comes up on points. So this is a, a pressure-packed game for the Broncos. I mean, they got right. a lot on the line tonight. They could fall down to the three seed and be on the road potentially with a loss. Here's Corbin spinning for keeping the legs churning. Does a good job to get something out of it. Gets about four or five. That was a good run, just kept the feet moving. And you're right, there's a lot more to lose for the Broncos. Oh, big time, you big know. time. Uh, Tuttle's, Tuttle's future, or excuse me, Newcastle's future is pretty well set. You know, coming out of this and, game, you just know, want to come out with When these games are done, we can do some quick math real quick. But, you know, like I said, Bethany's in first place right now, but only on points. Right. That's the important thing. So uh, if they lose, they're just going to, because they lost. But even a close win may not be enough for Bethany to hang on to that one seat. So that's going to be something to keep an eye on. I'm sure the Broncos broadcast is probably doing that more than we need to. Corbin bounces outside. He gets another handful of yards. It will be the third and long, though, thanks to that penalty earlier. So it'll be a third down to about 10. Yeah, and he's really strong up between the tackles. You really see them kind of having to deal with him pretty heavy. He's not much around the end. We haven't seen that a whole lot this year. But uh, he picked up a few yards there. It looks like a couple. Third down and 11 coming up here officially. Racers probably go for it if they can get close enough. Burt rolls out. Delayed screen back the other side here. This is Corbin again breaking tackles up the sideline. He's going to be short, but how close did he get? Wow. Looks like he got to about the 23 or so. I can't. Yeah, this is pretty close. So you're going to have a third down or a fourth down, I should say, at fourth about down. four. Three. Yeah, three yeah, or four. Long three, short four. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're going to go for it. Not even yeah. hesitating. Yeah, you got to go for this. Unless you're going to trust Batchelder, which you pro I mean, you could. The wind is really swipping in this place. Yeah. Big play here. Fourth down and four. Biggest play of the night so far. Burt in the shotgun. Back to pass. Fires out. Got an out route. It's caught by Heskew. First down. A great catch wow. by Rex Heskew. That was all hands. Great job. Great throw. I didn't I didn't even see him hit those yard markers, man. He I just looked up and he was there. So that was a great job. Great catch. 
It was a good job, first down, right yeah. in the red zone. That was really well done. A good throw by Burton, and just an all hands reach out. Yeah. Catch Grab by it, Rex it in. So first and 10 up at the 16. Racers are in the red zone here. QB draw play pushing forward, and he'll get uh, three or four yards. First chance to thank our red zone spots. First time the race has been in the red zone. The one touchdown came from outside of it. He right. and air guy. Cooling heat in the air that you breathe. It is not secret that in Oklahoma, your air conditioner and heater plays a vital role in your life. So we'll get your heater and air conditioner working and keep it working. Call them today, 405-305-5734. Second down and six at the 13. More Corbin. Broncos this time pretty ready for it. Bottled them up. Looks like a no gain. It'll be a third down and about six coming up. Yeah, they were right there. They kind of got around that block right there to shut off that hole. Um, now you're at the point where I, I would think you probably would entertain kicking if you get to fourth down. I would say we'll, we'll see if we get there, but a field goal ties the game. You, right. you, you feel like you're plenty close enough to kick it through with Batchelder, but we'll see what happens. If it's fourth and short, might have to make a decision. Third and six. Fake it, oh. fires at the Knicks, and it goes off his hands, incomplete. Had a little bit of room there. He might have been able to make something happen, but it goes off the fingertips, incomplete, and it's going to be fourth down, and here comes Mr. Batchelder. Yeah, I think he uh, saw some uh, ground to make up there and kind of looked away before the ball hit his hands. So unfortunate, but here you got Batchelder, and I'm going to say absolutely nothing about him so that I don't jinx <laughs> him at all. So here we go, Toby Batchelder, who has been really good for the Racers this season, lines up a 30-yard kick through a borderline windstorm. Spot down from Logan, kick is away. It's a line drive. It looks like it went right down the middle and it did. That was a laser. Man. And the racers have knotted things up 10-10 with 7.04 to go in the third. Broncos have the ball back next right here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Sidelined by surgery, illness, injury? Valor Physical Therapy can help. At Valor PT, our skilled therapists create a rehabilitation program individualized for you with education and encouragement each step of the way. Whether it's sports or the activities of life, let Valor get you back in the game. Start now at 405-265-6449. No referral needed. Mention Oklahoma Sports Network and get a free t-shirt at your first appointment. Back at Racer Stadium, where Toby Batchelder just booted a 30-yard field goal through the uprights to knock things up 10 apiece with 7.04 to play in the third. We got a ball game here, Bill. Oh, big time. Boy, they're playing great, just playing good. We knew it was going to be tough on the back end of this schedule, coming up against some tough teams, yeah. and they have hung right in there and just toe-to-toe -to -toe with them round for round. This is where right now you're, you want to win. That, that goes without saying, but... You were right there with Blanchard for a half, and the Lions made a couple big plays, pulled away, couldn't get the offense going. Last week you had a lead. You were down one score late, had the ball, couldn't quite get down and tie the game. You were so close a couple of times. Tonight, here you are again. Opportunity is there to get a statement win. You got a quarter and a half to go try and get it. We'll see what happens. It's going to be a fun finish here. Batchelder boots it away. Be fielded at about the 21-yard line. And rushing, getting across a 30 or so. I believe that was Wyatt Geisler, number 20. And the Lions will, or the Broncos, excuse me, will set up shop just outside the 30. Yeah, and again, you see it there. If you're watching it on film, they stay in their lanes. They shut him off. He didn't have a way to run around anybody. Brought him down right there at the 35. So even on special teams, they're playing with a lot of discipline and a lot of, a lot of head smart. This weather is so hot. I'm like hot and cold at the I same know. time. I don't really understand what's happening. It's, it's very strange. It's like a cold wind with 80% humidity. It's like only 60, but really humid. Yeah, it's strange. First and 10. Pass out. This is Heim. And he goes for about eight or nine yards. So we got Wet Wiska back at quarterback throwing out to Heim. They, they've essentially just traded off possessions all night right. long. Heim and Wiska. And truthfully, their offense has been more effective with Wet Wiska uh, at quarterback. 
seemingly, and just trying to get the ball out to Heim and run the ball right. with Gilland. Well, it seems like he's making decisions a little faster than yeah, we saw from yeah. Heim, so that may be what they're going for as well. And the wind seems to be really wreaking havoc on Heim, more so than Wet Wiska. Heim still kind of get lost up in the wind a little bit. They gave him a first down, and I thought he was short, but they moved the sticks. It is a first down up to the 45-yard line. 6.43 and counting to play in this third quarter. Wiska hands off to Gilliland, bounce outside, nothing there. Racers were all over that. They bottled that thing up. Second down and long coming up. I have not seen this kind of speed on a defensive line in high school in a while. I mean, and you're watching both the offensive line and defensive line. I'm sure they're both playing both directions, but they're just moving side to side so fast. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, no, I, the Racers have done a great job of neutralizing the running between that. We talked about at the top. Like to run the ball downhill with either Gilliland. Hadn't been a lot there at all mm. for the Broncos. Second and ten. Fake the handoff. Wet Wiska back to pass. Got some time. He'll roll out. Got a flag coming in here. And he'll scramble forward for about three or four yards. But this might be another hold here that would wipe out that play and back him up. And yeah, where they threw it, it's going to back him up really far. They dropped it right on the 40-yard line. I don't know if you can see it on the video. If that's holding against them, they're going to go way back. That is exactly what it is, a hold against the Broncos. And this is what, wow. obviously, it's a 10-10 game. But the difference right now in the offense is, is Bethany has shot themselves in the foot a yes. lot tonight. They've been behind the sticks a bunch. Racers really have it. They've done a good job of keeping ahead of the chains and avoiding back-breaking penalties. Bethany's had just too many of these. They've done real good, and really it looks like they're just pinning them to the inside, not letting them get too far away from them, which is where you see when they turn away, you see those holding calls. So all the way back to the 30, it's second down and 25. Got to get to the plus 45. Well, Wiska back to pass, got some time. He'll roll out, now he's got some guys in his face. He'll fire to the sideline, this is called the Roan. Caden Phillips one-on-one, -on -one, bodies him. Carl Young, who's a hitting machine tonight, yeah. came and laid the boom, and it's gonna be third down and a mile. I tell you what, Carl, when that hitting, my goodness. The guy is just seeking out contact tonight in a major way. He has played the thunder a few times. Well, and he's just a sophomore. I, he keeps hitting like that for the next three years. He's going to get a reputation. Really good basketball player, too. As oh, I'm sure it? you know, Carl Young. Yes, very good. He has uh, already got some schools looking at him just a sophomore. Mm. Third down in a lot. Got to get to the plus 45. They're on about the 30. Pressure up the side, Ooh. and he's busted. Ooh. Randy Brady. Nix absolutely pulverizes Wet Whiska into the turf. Wow. Just completely changed his reality on that shot. <laughs> I got caught between wanting to say popped. I was like, that's not enough. I tried to change it to blasted. It kind of became blasted, but it works. My Nix goodness. with an absolute crusher. Nick seems so hard, he's still trying to adjust all his equipment. I mean, you could, that was great because you could feel the whole crowd feel because he just came so clean off the blind, off the side. He never even saw him. And the racer defense stands up again, forces a punt here. This is a good punt, though. It's going to roll down inside the 40 at about the 36. And that's where the racers will set up on offense. But they have the ball back, and it's a tie game with 4.22 to go in the third. Oh, that was a, just a statement. I want, hits like that are momentum changers as well. You hear Josh and I talk a lot about momentum and those plays that change the feel of the game. You just felt something after that play that something may be changing here. So let's, let's hope that's the feeling. Racers definitely have the momentum right now in their defense. Boy, outside of the one touchdown, I mean, it, it's been tremendous. Which wasn't bad defense either. No, first and 10. Out in the flat, here's Logan. Can he make a guy miss? He does. Oh, Ooh, he makes wow. another one miss, and he Alex takes Logan. off. Alex Logan, it's a race down the left side. Breaks go, go, go. Into oh, the yeah. red zone. Wow. Unbelievable rack running after the catch from Alex Logan. Man, he got past those guys up here, and he was running for his life. I know the defender's going to have to go talk to coach. He was trying to hammer the ball. Unbelievable, he, and the one racer touchdown tonight came on that pretty much exact play. It's been Alex Logan's night, huge game for him, first and 10 at the 14 into the red zone. Racers knocking on the door of the lead. 
And off, Bolser up the middle, bounce outside, make one guy miss inside the 10, right at the 10. Is where he'll be put down, second half coming up. Thank our red zone sponsor, Heat and Air Guy, as Newcastle's knocking on the door of the lead. Wow, this is just incredible. It just, you, again, you feel excitement on this side of the field. You, you see silence on sitting down on that side of the field. Just an incredible change in the game. All the momentum with the blue and black right now. A lot of time left, but Racer's feeling good at the moment. Second and seven. Burt hands off the Bolster, cut back, and he'll get down inside the 10. He'll get about uh, three or four. He's gonna set up a third down and about, we'll call it three. He's at, he's at about the eight, gotta get to the, about the, just inside the five. Yeah. Uh, they're sending in the beef package here. Both sides are. That means big 28 Randy Nix yep, is uh, a there. heavy contender to get the football. 77 Taj. Split out, here comes the Wildcat with Nix. You see this a lot with the racers down in the in the red zone there. He's pushing forward inside the five. I, I think, think he that got should it. be a first down. I think he got it. It's gonna yeah, be real saying, close. He's pointing. And it is first down Newcastle. Woo. First and goal inside the five at about the four. I know these guys sign up to play, but you almost feel bad for that guy that has to tackle uh, Big Nick's right there at about the five yard line. You don't I wish that. Wish no I could fun. see his eyes. No fun. <laughs> First and goal at the four. Running again. Bird oh. splits out. Nick's going to get the snap. He'll take it. He dropped no. it, but there's whistles. Cramped up. And he got a. Got a Bronco player, yeah, laying down in the end zone. Yeah, I hate that. I know the fans hate that. I hate that it was called, but it was the right call. As they were getting lined up, he just dropped right there. So, Cramp got a hold of him, it looks like. They're just kind of stretching him out. So, thankfully, it's nothing yeah. more uh, severe than that. But, I mean, do you, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, you just stick with Knicks here or you trying something else? I mean, you got, it's first down, so you got some, some plays to play with here. I think coming back, I mean, everybody's going to be a little bit freshened up a little. I say you go right back to Knicks. It's what, first down? Yeah. First down and goal from first the four-yard line. That's so Heim, the one who cramped up. I say just keep feeding them, especially Heim coming out right there. That's He's usually their big hitter on that, that left side. So I'd say just keep feeding it, at least for another two downs. If you don't get in, then you can kind of throw something else at them. So first and goal at the four. Got 2.59 on the clock to play in this third quarter. All the momentum is firmly with the home crowd right now. And it'll be an avalanche oh, if yeah. uh, racers can punch this in. Get themselves back in the lead. Same deal. Burt splits out. Nix is going to get the snap. He'll take it to the left. Big toss. There Third he is. There the, it is. the lanes there. Oh, he walks no. in a late flag uh. as Nix walked in. It's a touchdown if it were to stand, but the flag probably is going to wipe this out. It was really late. That was a huge hole that he ran through. I can't help but wonder if it maybe was big for a reason. Yeah, doggone it. And it's a hole. That's too bad. Taj Smith absolutely laid the wood to create that lane. Yeah. And now it's going to be back him up, so it's still first and goal, but you're going to be uh, obviously out there a little ways now. Yeah, you see both teams kind of changing, changing who's on the field. They're getting back into their regular offenses and defenses. You see Heim back there. It's good to see him back in the game. So they moved him to the 13. Still first and goal. Back to more traditional offense here with Burt. Bolser next to him. Burt takes the snap. Handoff. He is given to Bolser. Oh, he stays on Whoa. his feet. I don't know how he pulled that off. Cut back. Great He's run. In. Good Cut job. down, Newcastle. Wow. Bolser somehow took the initial pop, bounced right off, cut back, found the end zone. I don't know how he pulled that off. Man, Touchdown. Just watch this on slow motion. You'll see it. It looks like he's completely stopped just right there, and then he bounces it out and runs around. Man, great run. So Carson Bolser from 13 yards out runs it in. And with the Batchelder extra point here on the way, which is punched through, it's a one touchdown lead, 17-10 with 2.41 to play in the third. Racers, all momentum, can the defense keep it going? Next on the Oklahoma Sports Network. This is Friday Night Football. 
on the Oklahoma Sports Network. It's no secret that life is busy and you have a million things on your to-do list. Here at Community Bank of Oklahoma, we've made banking simple again. We can help you get to the important things in life, like the big game tonight. We do all the heavy lifting so you don't have to. Race towards us at Community Bank of Oklahoma because we wouldn't be a community without you. Back at Racer Stadium, Racers in front 17 to 10 after the Carson Bolser 13 yard touchdown. Just one snap after Randy Nix's touchdown was wiped off the board. Bolser runs it in, he bounced off all fans. the line, I mean just Andy bodies, he just emerged and all of a sudden he's running it in and the Racers have a one score lead. That was just a great run, now they cannot let up now. They, they have not won this game yet, they've got to keep their foot down. But that was a great series, a great run by a bolster. So Newcastle has a lead. Defense has played really well in this third quarter so far. We'll see if they can keep it up. Batchelder gives it a boot. Ooh, this my. time he lets it fly, and it's going to go into the end zone. Take that. You can do the pooch thing, or you can just boot it right through for a touchback. That works too. <laughs> Man. And the racers, defense back out there. Had some flag girls in the band dodging that one. Holy cow, he got a hold of that. Yeah, he did. So, Bethany will get it out to the 20. So far in this second half, the Racers defense, I mean, it just hasn't been a whole lot there for the Broncos to work with. And yeah. it's been partially partially self-inflicted as well. The penalties have really hurt the Broncos. Got to avoid that. Heim back in at quarterback. Saw him cramping up just a minute ago. But he's back out there, ready to go at QB. He's going to fire out here. This is Geisler, and he's wrapped up and tackled immediately. Great, Great tackle by Burchett. Great job. Short pickup. Got about got a little more than I thought, maybe about five yards. Yeah, that was a good play. Good play by the defense. Good speed getting to the ball. Second down coming up here for the Broncos, where it feels like, you know, for Coach Arthur, you're thinking, we got to do something to get the momentum back on our side, kind of try and take this crowd out of it a little bit, because... Racer faithful right now is in it, feeling it. Second and six. QB run here with time. Oh, he's got job. nothing. Racers Nine bottle it up. Man, that was a great play by Carl. Uh, Carl Young. You saw him right there. He didn't go into the gap and get caught. So as soon as you saw Heim go to the left, he was able to go over to his right and stop him right there. Great, great play. Only about a two-yard pickup there, so third down and four coming up. And, boy, if you're the Broncos, you can't have another three and out. No. Here. Newcastle, meanwhile, that's exactly what they're <laughs> they're looking for here. Yeah. Third and four. 90 seconds to play in the third quarter here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Heim, handoff here. He's faked. He'll keep a oh. bounce outside. That's a hole. He's not going to get it anyway. He didn't go anywhere. Racers are swarming to the ball at an incredibly high level right now and there's no reason to take that that penalty i mean it's gonna be fourth down and four if if they want to go for it that backed up into their own end with how much struggles they're having running the ball i mean if i'm coach brickman i'm saying be my guest and that's exactly right. he's on the same thought process it's a yeah. they decline it and the broncos are gonna have to punt so if you're within two or three minutes for the game yeah you might want to think about going for it there yeah but i think that would be the only reason to do something like that unless your Cleveland. Yeah. Um, remember that? Yes. <laughs> that was a long time ago. You're pulling yeah. back. Those week one. Yeah, they went for it way deep in their own oh, end. Yeah. If with us, that was a, a head scratch. We all thought, like, surely they're not going to actually yeah. snap this. And that was like in the second did. quarter. <laughs> yeah, it was like maybe even earlier than that. It was it was early on. So they had some clock malfunctions here. Now they got the now they got it fixed. There was some conversation about what the time should be. Now they got it back on 55 seconds. Broncos will boot it away. Racers will have the ball back. And, I mean, right now you're feeling like one more score with the way your defense is playing. You're going to be in great shape. So we'll see what they can do here. That's right. Just, just stay on them. 
Calderon boots it. Nobody will field it. It goes out of bounds. Caught by our own Case and Troutman. That's our uh, OSN camera guy down there who caught it. <laughs> you saw the fans coming unglued on that one. Yeah, he, he started to mark it way <laughs> down from where it uh, went. They've had a bit of a rough go on, the, on this tonight. It has not been the strength of this crew. That's right. <laughs> you got to feel bad for the officials. You know, when you do it right, nobody knows you're there. So That's the idea. First and 10 to 41. 47 seconds to play in this third quarter. Four receivers set for Burt. Corbin, the running back next to him. Gives it to Corbin right up the middle. Got some room pushing forward. Legs are turning across the 45 to the 46. Call it five. Yeah, he's getting five on every run, and I think that's surprising. Um, Bethany, I don't know how much they planned for him. He didn't play too much in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and it's surprising because there hasn't been that many snaps in this game. I was that first quarter was really quick. The clock was moving the whole time. But Bethany looks a little worn down. They do. Me. I mean, Rixers are kind of just running it down their throat right now. They do need to snap it one more time, and they will. Second and five. Burt. Fake it to Corbin, throw out to Alex Logan on a little bubble screen. This has been so effective. Ooh. Big hit that time. That was Wet Whiska. <laughs> One of those two quarterbacks came and laid it on Logan, but he does get about four yards just oh, outside man. midfield. It'll be third down and real short coming up when we start the fourth quarter. At the end of three, it's Newcastle 17, Bethany 10 on the Oklahoma Sports Network. This is Friday Night Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Coast Technology Group specializes in audio, video, and lighting for schools, house of worship, home, and business. Work with our team's engineers to design the right system for your conference rooms, video telecommunications, stadiums, auditoriums, video walls, home theater, and automation. Whether your next project is large or small, let our team with over 150 years of combined experience help design the right system with simple, reliable technology. We come from different backgrounds with diverse interests and unique learning styles. Finding classes that fit your individual needs isn't a challenge at Cameron University. A small campus and dedicated faculty ensures there's always someone close by to guide you on your journey. Your success is our success. Your education is our mission. At Cameron University, you're not a number, you're part of the family. Back at Racer Stadium for the fourth quarter. Josh Calloway, Billy Collier, Newcastle, and Bethany. Racers are up 17-10. Big third down here in wow. short to start the second, or the fourth quarter, I should say. Corbin just keeps those wow. legs moving. And that's another first down for the Racers. All the momentum is with Newcastle right now trying to make this a two-score lead if they can get there. And Corbin is just making them pay to try and stop him. I mean, they're just popping out there. You can almost hear it up here. Quick check in on the other scores real fast. Blanchard on top of Tecumseh 35-12, and Tuttle on top of Klassen 48-6. So if those scores hold and this score holds, Blanchard would win the district. Oh my. And now that's uh, jumping way off sides yeah. there. Whew. My goodness. I think that's been the one that Burt's had all year that got him the most. I mean, he almost pulled a tendon trying to get back. Excuse me, I misspoke. Tuttle would win the district if that were to hold. Uh, if those if those scores hold and this score holds, Tuttle would win the district. Blanchard would even move ahead of Bethany and the Broncos would pull it down to third. We'll look at all that when the games are done. Corbin breaks free up the middle inside the 20. And up goes the number 24. Great job, great run. Man alive, he's just showing a different, different person tonight. Now they're bringing in some fresh legs. Into the red zone again. We didn't get heat and air guy in at all until the second half. Now he's just living on the screen. Oh, no. Racers trying to make this a two score lead. And tell you what, we joked about it, but I'm sure there's some Tuttle fans tuned in. You know, they're Absolutely. Tuttle's shellacking classing right now. Got it on their phone. They're saying, hey, That's look at right. what the racers are doing. First and 10 at the 19. Nick's in motion. 
Burt takes the shotgun snap. Handoff goes to Bolster up the middle, pushing forward inside the 15. Mm. And now, he, now see, he's a lot faster, a lot shiftier. And so now you're having to change your mindset if you're on defense. You're used to Corbin where it's just mano a mano, hit and go. Now you're going to go to reach for him, and you're going to have Carson Bolster spin, go somewhere else, stop, pivot. And so it's just a whole different type of running. Second down and six at the 15-yard line. Newcastle trying to make this a two-score lead if they can finish this thing off. Bolser again, up the middle, pushing four, legs churning. And it'll be about a three-yard pickup, sets up a third down and call it three at about the 12. Wow. They're, they're showing some, some strength running tonight. I mean, just again, it just feels like Bethany is on their heels. They're worn down. They're, they're doing anything they can to try, but Newcastle's just running the ball at will. Well, and watch how slow they get up off the ground. Bird splits out. Here comes the, the bulldozer package with Mr. Randy Nix. Direct snap to him. Oh, Got a flag no. right away. And it blew the play dead. Play never even happened. Not mm. sure what that was, a false start maybe? I didn't notice anything, but that's exactly what either. the call is. So mm. a false start against Newcastle. Backs him up to third and eight. That's a big call, obviously. Third three or third and eight, big difference. Right, huge difference. Especially if you're trying to impose your will on them. Yeah. You're running the ball so well, I'd almost be tempted to still run the ball, even on third and eight. Oh, I know. Well, especially down here, I don't know that you're going to go for a kick. You may go for a field goal. But sure. this wind blowing right up against you, right I don't in know. your face down at this end, right? Third down and eight, 10, 12 on the clock. Rinkster's up by a touchdown, trying to make it more. Nix goes in motion there. It's five wide set for Burt. He'll fire out. Guess who? Alex Logan on the bubble screen. Makes the guy miss. Nix is blocking, and he blocked a little too good. I think he's going to get a flag here. Yeah. Oh, and another flag, flag goes flying wow. at the end of the play. And what you don't want right now is this, because penalties for Newcastle, that would move them all the way back. Now all of a sudden you can't even try a field goal. That's uh, not what you want, so we'll see what the calls are here. Well, and correct me if I'm wrong, if that one that's late, that could be after the play, so then you would go with both fouls. It's like if it was holding, I believe you do so, the holding yeah. and then do the fifth, you know, if it's uh, after the ball. Indication is holding against the offense. Looks like the two flags were for the same thing, okay. uh, a hold. Ah. So that's going to back the racers back up. And Again. now the Broncos are thinking, man, if we can limit them on this third down play, they're going to be too far to try a field goal with this stiff wind. Yes. And they could still hold this to a one-score lead, which is – Obviously, what you have to do right now if you're the Broncos. You may just have that last bit of energy to shut this one down. Back to the 28-yard line. They got to get just inside the 10, so call it a, a long 18 or a short 19 for the Racers. Big play here. Burt back to pass. A little delayed screen off to Logan. He caught it, and he's wrapped up. Nice tackle there by 30 Woods Harrell, who's... Been one of the Broncos' best players tonight, and he, I'm not going to say that Logan would have picked up the first, but he would have got some yardage on that. But Harold wrapped him up, and now the Racers are way backed up, and decision time coming here for Coach Brickman with 9.48 to go. Wow. Take a timeout to figure it out. What would you do here? I mean, do you, do you try and punt and try to pooch it and see if you can't pin him inside the 10? It's, this is a, a delicate spot. I think I would probably still try to go for it, because even if you don't get it and you get it down on the 18-yard line, that still has them fairly deep. Your defense has been playing outside its mind. And so I would probably still go for it because if you go for a little pooch punt, chances are it's going to roll into the end zone and then you're just going to have, oh, maybe a 10-yard gross or 10-yard punt yeah. on the. So I would probably still go for it because even if you don't get the yards, at least you get them pinned farther back. Thank our uh, fourth quarter sponsor as well. Can't forget American Water Solutions. They came on uh, last week with Eric yep. doing the game. My first time getting to pub them in there, so thank you. A brand new sponsor. I, I love it. Getting our fourth, our fourth quarter has been a, uh, it's been naked all year. Not having that quarter <laughs> sponsor in the corner. So nice to get one in there. American Water Solutions. Appreciate them jumping on board. That's right. No more naked uh, quarters. Yeah, absolutely. No more naked quarters. Absolutely. So appreciate that. American Water Solutions, our fourth quarter sponsor uh, tonight here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Fourth and twenty-one. They got Burt out there, but I, I mean, it, I definitely wouldn't put past him punting this. Maybe they will throw it and see if they can't get it. And they're going to they're gonna roll the dice here. Burt rolls out. He's got all day. It's going to fire pass. He's oh. tipped in. Oh, oh. that would have been a bad interception for yeah. uh, Bethany. It would have cost him about 20 yards. Just went off the hands of um, of Jackson or uh, oh. Shanuel. 
So yeah. it's a turnover on downs, and the Broncos do what they had to do, which is keep the Racers out of the end zone out and keep them off the scoreboard at all. And they get the ball back with 9.44 to go. Well, and this is going to be tough. A lot of their players, do, you know, again, their key players are playing both ways, which we see a lot anyway. But their hands were on their hips. They were slow getting off the ground. They're looking pretty tired. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, and I would even go as far as to say it wasn't the Broncos that kept them out of scoring. I think it was more the, uh, the oh, penalties. What a catch by our Carson Wade wow. on the producer. They're throwing foam footballs in there. Left hand le reaching over. That was good. That was big time. Back to action here on the actual field. They run up the middle for the Broncos, and it's Gill, and they'll go for about five. So this racer defense has been phenomenal. I mean, in the second half, Bethany hasn't been able to do anything. I don't know if they've even picked up a first down, but just need one. That's all the Broncos need. One drive, one big play could tie this up. Wow. Second and four for the first down run by Gilliland. Oh. Low snap, Wedwiska has to scoop it. Pressure in his face, he'll fire, and it's dove. Did Heim catch that? Ah. I, I can't saying tell. The official on the near side was saying it's hitting the ground, but they're still walking forward. Yeah, the one with the best view, I think, is saying it hit the ground. Yeah, so they're they're gonna gonna say it so that's an incomplete pass. That was almost yeah. a tremendous catch by Taylor Heim. He's upset. Yes. With the call, I truthfully could not tell. I, I, I couldn't either. It was almost like the two uh, fans, the two uh, stands were seeing a different game. Yeah. One yells screaming, yay. The other one's yelling boo. It was right in front of us here, but just yeah. with the way the bodies were, I couldn't really make it out. No, so it's an incomplete either. pass. Third and four, chance of the race to maybe force another quick three and out with 9.08 to play. Wet Wiska back to pass, pump fake once. He'll fire down the sideline. He's got oh, Gillen, got behind his man, and he's loose down the sideline. Gillen into the red zone, and he's in. Touchdown, Bethany. Wow. 64 yards to the house for Jaden Gillen. And an extra point will tie it for the Broncos. Wow. That incredible. I Man, a lot. He was wide open. That's one of the few times we saw a receiver get behind. Uh, the only time, I can think. And just, oh, devastating. A 64 yard touchdown toss from Heim to Gilliland. And if this extra point will go through, we're going to be tied with 8.53 to go. Wow, wow, wow. Let's see if they can come out with a block. The extra point here will be tried by Ryland Sanders. Mm. Wasn't pretty, but it goes through, and wow. we're tied up 17-17, 8.53 to play. Timeout on the field. Racers getting the ball back next on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We come from different backgrounds with diverse interests and unique learning styles. Finding classes that fit your individual needs isn't a challenge at Cameron University. A small campus and dedicated faculty ensures there's always someone close by to guide you on your journey. Your success is our success. Your education is our mission. At Cameron University, you're not a number, you're part of the family. Back here at Racer Stadium, where the Broncos 64-yard touchdown toss mm. from high from uh, Wetwiska to Gilliland ties it up, and the Racers will get the football back with 8:53 to go. Boy, what a wild sequence that was! And the Racers in the red zone look like they're maybe going to take a two-score lead. Penalty bites them; they get stopped on fourth down. Broncos connect on a huge play, which is what it felt like Bethany needed. They weren't going to drive the ball against this racer defense. They get the big play they needed. Return here for Birch, and he breaks it free! It's a flag, it's gonna wipe this out. A flag is gonna bring this back. Birch, it is loose down the sideline all the way into the red zone, but a flag is gonna bring this back. Mm. Ah. I don't know, it looked like there's some, some people got tied up down there. I don't know which way it's gonna go, we'll find out. Pretty sure it's gonna come back. The White Hats walked down quite a ways. Uh, figured he'd probably stay back there closer to the flag if it was coming back. Let's see what they call. 
There's another flag up here at the 46. Role models are more important than ever in what, today's uh, society. I haven't seen a signal yet, but everybody's trotting back, so I'm thinking it did get Let's wiped out. Good sports are winners, so remember, be a good sport and act properly. So with 840 to go, Racers will have the football. We'll see where they end up putting it here after the penalty. Chain gang's not sure where to set up either. They're kind of right. waiting for uh, something official. Well, it had a we're you know thinking a real clean first half, and it seems like the the laundry's come out in the second half a lot more. Big time, big time. So a hold on the racers there backs them up. So Newcastle will no sideline warning. Oh, uh, the sideline one was the other one. You're correct. That was also against Newcastle. Okay, I'm confused about that. Don't you usually get a warning on a sideline? Then how come they don't get the ball down here at about the 10-yard line? Why is it still back there unless there's another penalty? Well, there was a hold. There was a hold and then the sideline. Oh, I didn't see the hold. That's yeah, my okay. bad. You're good. Yeah, there was a hold and then the sideline warning. That's what the two were. So the racers will set up. They're at the 21, 22. First and 10, 840. Time not at all a factor just yet. Bethany Crow, which has been, I mean, mostly silenced. I mean, the, the second half, they're into it now. That's Huge right. play, and that, that side of the stadium the is alive. The first and ten for the racers That's for the first the time in this second half, certainly the momentum is, is kind of with the purple team now. So we'll see if the racers can't find a way to flip things back their way. Big play here on All first right. down, try and get things off to a, on a good start. Run up the middle here for Bolser. Squeezed around again. Good job to get a few yards out of that one. It looked like there really wasn't anything there, so he'll take what he gets. About a three-yard pickup, second down and seven coming up. Yeah. yeah, that was another one where he ran into the stack. You saw him kind of get stopped. Somebody had a death grip on his jersey, but he swung around, picked up another yard or two. Got to get up to the 32. Have it on about the 26 or so, maybe just 25 and a half, something like that. Second down. Burt rolls out. Looking for somewhere to go with it. Instead, he'll go ahead and tuck it in and run. Gets across the 30, lower the shoulder, spin forward, and that's a first down. Very smart Good play job. by Burt. We saw that earlier in the game, too. Not forcing it, not throwing it into traffic. Let me go ahead and tuck it, see what I can get. And, you know, with Jackson Burt, more often than not, you're going to fall forward, you're going to get yards. So he does just that first down. And that's a smart play. I see a lot of quarterbacks trying to fit it into small holes, try and get it yeah. here or there. Just take what you can, get what you can get. That's a product of two full years of being the starting quarterback. You can tell how much that football IQ has, you know, grown right. and grown and grown from the start of last season to now. Oh, yeah. First and 10 at the 34. Burt, hand off to Bolser, pushing forward, and he gets about five more yards, hard running there. And you're, you're okay with this if you're Newcastle. Absolutely. Stay in front of the chains, keep that clock moving. If you could use a, you know, five, six minutes and get points, that's the dream scenario. That's right. <laughs> right obviously here for, for Coach Brickman. You know, unless there's catastrophe, if their offense isn't in on the field, they're not scoring. So keep them off the <laughs> More field. More likely than not. Second and five. Hand off Bolser again, pushing forward. And this time, Broncos were on it. Does a good job to again fall forward to get a, a yard or two out of it. But it will be third down coming up. And keeping it up in the sticks. Get out there, third and three, third and four, yeah. Yeah. things like that. Great job. That's just that methodical going. Reminder, if you're just now tuning in, the Broncos need to win this game to try and win 4A2. If they lose, they're not going to. If they win, it'll come down to points. It's a barn burn. Oh, it's man. a barn burn. Third down and three for the racers here. Ooh, oh, and it's no. a false start going to go against Newcastle. Instead of third and three, it's going to be third and eight. And we saw that happen on the last drive, and it pretty much derailed the whole possession. Yeah. You hope it doesn't happen this time, but. Yeah, yeah you got to keep it going. You got to keep it going. And see, now you're starting to see them. They're, they're kind of getting their fans all muscled up and getting them cheering and loud, and they're kind of getting fired up into this. So you got to take that out of the game. Even if Bethany wins, Tuttle can still win the district. The Broncos would need to win this game by at least nine points, I believe, if my math is correct. So they got some work to do. 
Pass out in the flat here to Randy Nix. It's caught, gets across the 45. I think that's a first down. It definitely is. First down for the Good racers. Job. Huge pickup. And once again, when, when they need it, Coach Jeff Brickman dials something up that works. And he has this year got those receivers blocking incredible. You had Bobby right there pushing them back. Great you call. had Phillips there pushing them back. Rex Heskey pushing them back. Just great stuff. So it's another first down for Newcastle. The penalty doesn't derail the drive as it did last time. First down up to the 45. Hand off goes to Bolser, pushing four, bouncing off guys. He'll get about four yards. And you'll, you'll take that again. I mean, That's right. three, four yard pickups, keeping the clock moving, keeping the, the positive momentum going on your drive is so important. It's what they've done so well tonight. You're seeing it right now. Well, and I don't want to get too much into the coach's head, but I like that you're running Bolser a lot right now. And then here in about three minutes, you bring in um, Corbin. Yeah. They're tired, they're, yeah. their hands are on their hips, and then he just starts hitting people. Second down and six on the Newcastle 49. Bolser, bounce outside. Racer, or Broncos, I should say, are all over it this time, though. He's stripped up, and that's what I, we were just saying. They've avoided a negative play. He loses about two, and now you're going to have third and long, and the Bethany crowd is on their feet. Now let me return the question to you. Let's say you don't make it here. What do you do? I'm going. You're going, huh? <laughs> I'm going. Racers are, are all but penciled into fourth. Right. Very little to lose. Senior night for a lot of these guys. Roll the dice. That's what I would do. Oh. But we'll see what happens if we get there. We got some whistles here. Looks like they're going to make one of the Gillins there. That's 26 Jack Gillin come off the field. I'm not sure if it was uh, – a bleeding or if there's a helmet issue, not, I can't quite tell, yeah. but. Well, that's okay, he's just gonna be replaced by uh, Jaden Gilliland. There you go. <laughs> Gilliland for Gilliland, now he got whistles oh, again. Man. I think this is gonna be another false start. <sighs> and with 5.05, Newcastle's gonna be saddled with a third and 13. Mm. Not ideal. No, and they brought great Corbin. had that first down play, obviously, where you got it to second down and six, now you're looking at third and 13. And that's exactly what they've avoided tonight, but getting bit by it here at an inopportune time. Absolutely. We'll see what can happen here on this third down. I think if they can get seven or eight or so, I definitely think they'll go for it, but we'll, we'll see when we get there. Well, you got Grady Corbin right there on his right hip. 5.05 to go. Burt takes it, fake the hand up to Corbin, back to pass. He'll step up in a clean pocket. Now he's gonna kind of scramble pressure from behind. He bounces out again, making guys miss everywhere, carrying guys across midfield. That was an unbelievable effort to get what he did. Wow. Up to the plus 49, and it's gonna set up a fourth down in about four and a half. Man, he ran 30 yards <laughs> uh, to pick up that 15 he or so. dodged about five or six different Bethany guys that I thought had a clean look to put him down. Man. And it's going to be fourth down, and Coach Brookman doing exactly what we speculated. He's going for it. That's, uh, got this, to. You got both sides excited and up and rumbling right now. And also, your defense has played tremendous. I mean, you gave yes. up that big play, but for the most part, it's been great. Fourth and four. Watch mm. for the offside. The Kinda offside there. that would result in a first right now. And now you have whistles. Looks like Coach Brickman wants to dial something up and take a timeout and talk about it. 4-12 to go. We'll take a timeout as well. We'll come back fourth down next right here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. This is Friday Night Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Team up with Pioneer iVideo and start streaming the most popular TV shows and movies from your favorite devices today. Download the iVideo app and start watching anywhere in your home using Pioneer Internet. Each package includes free high definition and cloud DVR features like Video On Demand, Restart TV, and Replay TV, just in case you forget to record a program. Visit GoPioneer.com for more details and compatible devices. Some restrictions apply. Back at Racer Stadium, Josh Calloway, Billy Collier. We'll paint the scene for you here. Fourth down and four for Newcastle with 4-12 to play. They're at the Bethany 49-yard line. Got to get just past the 45. They're kind of more at the 48 and a half. It's about fourth and four. 4-12 to go. 
and they're going to go for it. Wow. And out of a timeout, Coach Brickman is batting really high yes. of dialing something up that works. So we'll see what happens here. Massive play in this game, obviously. Fourth down and four. Three receivers at the top, one at the bottom. Knicks goes in motion, make it even, two and two. Running back next to Burt is Corbin. Got the snap, back to pass, fire on the flat, got a man, and it's caught. First down, Alex Logan, have a night. Up to the 40, first down, Newcastle. And you're right, coach had a perfect call. That corner had to come in in case the handoff went to Brady Corbin. And so because of that, that left a guy open out there on the flat, so he gave the pass to him. Boy, that little just underneath dink and dunk with Alex Logan has been killer tonight for Bethany. They have not found a way to stop it. Four minutes to play at Racer Stadium. Handoff goes to Corbett, pushing forward up the middle. He'll run for about four yards. Good first down play. Second down and six at the 36. And now we're not there just yet, but we're getting close to Bethany having to think about what they do with their timeouts. That's right. They got 345 to go. They have all three. But if they let the Racers keep just inching their way down the field, this clock's going to melt off. That's right. And either it's going to be a racer win or overtime. And they're only about 15, 20 yards from being inside where Batchelder has a chance yeah. to do this. Oh, so, yeah. oh, yeah. So if they keep going for three and a half minutes, they're going to get it down there if not in the end zone his, real close. His strong leg, that those kind of line drive kicks that he has, they'll cut through this win. Second down and six. Handoff goes back to Corbin, pushing forward. He'll run ahead for a yard or two. Got another flag tossed in there real late. Yeah. It's not going to be great if that's on Newcastle. It's going to set up a second down and long. You think face mask? I'm thinking it may have been a face mask. It was in, in a. It was kind of um, in the pile there. In, yeah, and that's exactly what it is. A face mask against the Broncos. Good catch by you, Mr. Collier, and that's going to be a first down. That's a killer penalty yeah. against the Broncos. That puts them up to the 30-yard line. That should be a first down. It is. Yes. And it's first and ten right there. Wow. Yeah, you could kind of see when he was stuck in that. It looked like a defender when he was falling was just reaching up to grab something, accidentally grabbed the face mask. Boy, there have been, uh, and on, on both sides, both teams, some absolutely crushing penalties in this game. I mean, yeah. just not not as many as we've seen in some other games, but just inopportune times tonight. First and 10 to 30. Corbin up the middle, breaking tackles inside the 25. Sets up a second and short. Clock keeps moving. And right now the Broncos are on the ropes. He is playing the game of his life tonight. Just a great job. You can see the confidence building on him from the first of the season. He's running with a lot of confidence. Give a lot of credit too to this racer offensive line. We do that yes. all year where we get talking with the running backs and we try to make sure we get them, but they're they're dominating. They're creating huge lanes for these guys. Second down and three. 237 and counting to play at Racer Stadium. Newcastle trying to end the season with a signature win here in Newcastle. Corbin up the middle, pushing forward. He'll get down. That's going to be really close to so another first down. Looks like it's going to be a first And they down. gave it to him. First down for the Racers, down to the 20. Go ahead and get him in there, Carson. Heat and air guy, a red zone sponsor, as Newcastle's knocking on the door. And did the Broncos finally take a timeout? That's exactly what they did with 224 to go. Wow, just a great game. Uh, this has been enjoyable. They took over this drive. They had the ball. It was about eight and a half minutes wow. left to go in this game. We're down to 224. I mean, just yeah. you can't draw it up any better than what the Racers have done, but you got to finish it. You have to. you got to finish it. It all means nothing if you don't find a way to put it either in the end zone or through the uprights. Yeah, you got to keep pushing. And the way the defense has played, even if they get a three, if Batchelder gets it, they put them deep back here by the 20, between the 20 and 30. I'm not sure on that defense, provided unless there's, you know, mess up in coverage, I don't think you can come back from that. I don't think there's enough time. Because they're a run first team. Yeah, yeah. it could so, be hard. It could be hard. Be and real hard. And especially if and there's no reason to think, <laughs> think otherwise, but if Newcastle keeps running the ball and forces Bethany to keep burning those timeouts, yeah. it's going to put them in a real tough spot. So, 2.24 to go, it's first and 10, right at the 20 yard line. Bethany just used their first time out, they have two left. Racers have one, but they're not really gonna need it right now, other than to set something up if they want. First and 10, handoff, Corbin pushing forward, and again, three or four yard pickup, and that's, yeah. that's you're fine with that. If you're Newcastle, Absolutely. just keep on Corbin chugging forward, keep that clock ticking. 
You're on the 16-yard line. You could do that another seven times and still get in there for a touchdown or a field goal. Imagine how agonizing this must be for uh -huh. the Broncos. I mean, you're just watching that clock melt away right now. As we'll run underneath two minutes to go. It's got to be disheartening. They're not disguising it. They're handing it off. He's running up the middle and just making people pay. Second down and seven. Buck 50 and counting. Handoff goes Corbin again. He lunges forward for about two or three. It's down to the 15. And the Broncos are going to take their second timeout with 141 to go. So, in essence now, what you have here, it's going to be third down and five or so. Maybe third and four. Um, as we got 141 to go, Broncos just took their second timeout. If the Razors pick up another first down, the Broncos will have to burn their final timeout, and Newcastle will, I mean, really, really have a vice grip on it at that point because they either can try to bleed the clock and, and kick it, or they can punch it in and not leave Bethany with much time and no timeouts. I mean, no matter how you slice it, Broncos, they're, they're in a tough spot no matter what, but if they pick up this first down, it, it's it's going to be real tough for the Broncos now. Well, and I think using their second timeout shows you they're in a desperation mode. They, they're just trying to save. You wonder if there's almost a sense of, like, let them score. I mean, get the right. ball back because Newcastle's just bleeding this clock for all it's worth. <laughs> yeah. Again, they got the ball with 8.35, I think it was, to start this drive. I mean, it's just melted away. Oh, and you got to love it just as a methodical. Oh, it's amazing. Just, we it's said, amazing. We have to establish the run, and I think that they're doing that very well. So it's third down and four at the 14. Burt splits out. Here comes Randy next direct snap. You already know. He takes it, push forward. He's got the first down inside the 10. Good job. First and goal right there for the Racers. Under 140 to go. It's going to stop at 138. First and goal at the nine, and this has just been a big boy drive for Newcastle right now. Man, they just keep going down the field and keep going down the field. Now they're starting up the clock again. Yep, Bethany didn't take a timeout. Clock keeps moving, under 90 seconds. Direct snap to Nix. Take it to the right, breaking tackles. Keep the legs moving down to the six. Mm. And you're almost okay with that. If you're Newcastle, right. you almost don't want him to score just yet. <laughs> Line him up again. Keep that clock ticking. You can let it get all the way down to about, what, 40 seconds before you need to snap it again. I mean, right now, Bethany's just hoping for a disastrous mistake. I mean, right. that's all that they have to hang their hat on. I mean, certainly you want to punch this in. You don't, I mean, Batchelder's been great. You don't want to have to rely on a kick, certainly, if you can avoid it. Second and goal at the seven. Nix takes the direct snap to the right side. There's a oh. little pad that he slipped. Mm. He was down. The ball came out, but he was definitely down. down As Nix tried to cut back, he probably maybe scores on that if his feet don't slide out yeah. from under him. And now with 42 seconds left, the Racers are – did the racer take a timeout here to the Broncos? No. I'm not sure who took it. The Bethany took it. Okay, 42 seconds. Oh, oh we got some drama here. I know. What a way to end the regular season. Well, I think he saw that hole and his eyes got big, but his feet just couldn't grab it. And he just had yeah, Man. He got uh. eaten up by the turf monster. Just slid out right from underneath them. Now, again, question. Let's say you get it down to the two-yard line. Do you just hurry up and go? I think you got to trust Batchelder to boot that through, don't you? Oh, I think so. Yeah. I, I mean, just, he's been reliable for you. And I, I, like I said before, you hate to rely on a kick. And it's no disrespect to Batchelder. He's no. been great. But you just, in general, in high school football, where there's got to do a snap and a hole, you, right. it makes you a little nervous. It does. But I, you got to trust it. I think it, it's a higher percentage than trying to run it in, even, though, even as well as they're running. But maybe they score here and it's a moot point. Right. Third goal to five. I'd love to see 13 run out there and get a pass from Nix. I think Could it would happen. mess them all up. Burt splits out. They're going to go right to Nix. Here he goes with it. Goes to the left side, and oh. the Broncos bottle it up. So here we go. It's going to come down, presumably, to Toby Batchelder to boot this thing through. They're going to they're going to let it go down. Oh yeah, you're going to this the, this should be the final snap. It should be either it. you win right here. Or we go to OT. That should be where you're at. So it's wow. going to come down to Mr. Batchelder. He was our player of the game a few weeks ago. He's been tremendous all season. 
his family, great supporters of the Oklahoma Sports Network. Big time, yes. And he's going to have a shot to give Newcastle a mammoth win to end the regular season. Wow. Timeout, one second on the clock. This is it. And here we go. I mean, yeah. here we go. What a great way to end the what season, great, you know? What a great Just way to end the season. Uh, oh, everybody's going to be up. Everybody's going to have that anxiety. You're going to feel a vacuum in this stadium. The pressure, I mean, it, it, it's hard to, it's tough. I mean, the, oh, as the yeah. wind starts kicking up <laughs> I know. right on cue, right on cue, the wind kicks up. We got one second. You can't quite see it. It got cut off here. I'll fix it. One second, all that there is in this game. Toby Batchelder, the racers kicker. A junior, took over the job last year, had really good moments. This year, he's been great, extremely reliable, made a field goal earlier tonight. He's got a big leg, line drive kicks, cuts through that sharp wind. He's got a chance to, to be the hero right now for Newcastle with one second on the clock. Oh, I don't even know what to say. I, I'm just here silent. Alex Logan is your holder. Fitting. Spot down, kick is up. It's right through and then, no, he missed oh. it. He missed it, I apologize, he missed it. Mm. From my angle, I thought it went right through. He missed it to the side. I waited a, just a half tick. It went through. It went off to the right. He missed it. Wow. So here we are, the end of regulation. I guess it was wide right. It's hard. We don't have a great angle. It's really no. hard to tell. Boy, it, I'm surprised at that missed. I wish I had another angle of it. I know, and it goes by the yellow upright so fast, you can't. <laughs> anyway. You can't tell. Anyway. So Batchelder misses the kick. Hate to see that for him. Obviously, he's been so reliable, but yeah. misses there, and we're going to play overtime. Wow. We'll take a timeout. We're going to collect our thoughts. <laughs> we'll come back. We'll have overtime for you next on the Oklahoma Sports Network. When it comes to your home, you need someone that you can trust to keep it safe and protected for you and your family. Vesta Foundation Solutions is your local, family-owned company that has helped many homeowners fix and protect their homes. Our engineered solutions can take care of all of your foundation repair, basement waterproofing, concrete leveling, and dirt crawl space repair needs. We take pride in getting the job done right, and you'll always be protected with up to a 75-year warranty. Contact us today for a free estimate. He's going to have to get that out of his head fast. Spoke that new existence. All right, back here with you at Racer <laughs> Stadium. Maybe close the mics during the commercial. Thankfully, uh, we said everything. We're fine. 17-17 uh, as uh, we get into overtime here. I mean, I, have, have we had an overtime game? We've been um, doing this since our third year, Billy and I. I don't. I can't immediately think of any games. I can't either. I thought last week we'd go to overtime, and then you know, with the minute and a half left when they scored. But no, I don't know that we will. They have the clock going down for some reason. Yeah, if you're unfamiliar with uh, high school overtime, there is no clock. We get on to take the clock off if you want. Um, there is no clock. It's kind of similar to college overtime. You just trade possessions back and forth until we have a winner. So hmm. that simple. Well, is it they have four downs to get in, or is it um, one down I to think, go I it. think so. I think you get it to 10, uh, right? I'm, in fact, now that we're going through it, I'm certain that we have not had an, over, <laughs> not had an overtime <laughs> game. I believe you get it to 10, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, yeah, it's just as simple as that. You get, you know, just like you would normally. I mean, if you get a penalty to extend it or whatever, you get it, obviously. It's just a regular series of downs. So right. we'll see what happens. So it's going to be the... Racers defense on the field first. Bethany gets the ball first, which is what you want. If you're Newcastle, you want to have the ball second, know what you need to do in order to win the game. So Broncos will start with the ball. 10-yard line. Well, and this is where you feel good with the defense. And I don't want to jinx anybody or anything, but you feel good with the defense. They're tired. Our defense, for the most part, has been sitting still for the last 
Well, it feels like 20 minutes, but uh, so they should be well and fresh. We'll see what happens. You're just tuning in for overtime. We are just now about to start. Bethany is getting the ball first. So Newcastle has not got the ball yet. Broncos are getting the ball first here to start this overtime. Racers missed a short field goal at the end of regulation. That would have won it. We go to OT. Broncos have it first. Which quarterback do they go with? It looks like Wiska is going to be your QB for the Broncos. He's been the more effective of the two, believe it or not, over Taylor Hine. And He's I was still on the field, certainly, at that receiver spot. Well, I definitely say watch Taylor Hine with that height to throw just a jump ball. Because he's got some height on Heskey over there. They trade possessions. Again, if you're not familiar with how it works, they each get it at the 10-yard line, just back and forth. Very similar to college overtime style, except for it's at the 10. And so we got a winner. They'll switch ends of the field for each overtime. If there's more than one, play ball. Mm. Baseball style. World Series is going on right now, so. Yeah, there you go. Have your due, and the racers are going to have a chance for a walk-off. Yeah, sure. They can hit a home run. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this would be a good hold right here. That wind has remained whipping all yeah. night. I mean, as the officials are having conversations here, I'm not sure what about. We talk about it, you know, before we came on the air. A few weeks ago, it was really windy, and that kind of as the game went on, the wind kind of petered out a little bit. It hasn't tonight. Not it has been all. whipping and whipping and whipping. No, you can count since the strike. Since we got here and started setting up about five hours ago to yeah. now, it's been it's been going. Yeah, you can count the stripes over there on the flag. It's just straight out. Yep. Official's still having a conversation. I'm not sure what this is about. It's it's having it with the Bethany sideline. I'm not sure if it's a. Maybe a clarification on something. How many timeouts? I mean, who knows? I mean, there's not that many times you go to OT. Now they're going to switch ends of the field, I think. Huh. That's a lot to do about nothing, I think. But I guess with the wind. See, that's surprising to me because you're coming down to the end zone that uh, that Batchelder just missed it because of the wind. And so now you're going to face that same wind in case you need to make a three-point. Yeah, that is a surprise. I guess maybe the, I don't know, maybe Bethany it just knows we're not going to kick it, so let's right. go ahead and uh, go to the wind in our face side first. Wow. I don't know. That's a good, that's a good, I'm not sure. Maybe don't want to have the band right in their face. Uh, I'm not, you know, there's a lot of, who knows. Who knows? Uh, I know. Maybe a lot of little things that go into that decision. <laughs> we're trying to figure out how people think. Can't be done. No. Nah. However, this now puts Heim with uh, Schumard. Or no, that's Phillips, Phillips. isn't it? Number three, Phillips. What a ball game it's been. Here we go in overtime with Wiska under center. Heim the man in motion. With Wiska, hand off to Gillen. Up the middle, push forward. Not a whole lot there. He'll get about three. Second and goal to seven. Again, if you're just tuning in, we're just starting overtime. This is the first possession. Racers oh, will get the football next. Yeah, you just got to stop them. A classic to close out the regular season here at Racer Stadium. Bethany hoping to try and win a district title. I don't, I, I, I mean, I'll try and do quick math. I don't know if they're even able to. We'll look at it all when, once we're all said and done. Second and goal at the seven. I'm in motion. He'll get it on the end around. He can throw, and he will to the end zone. It's floating. Calderon oh, wow. in the corner. Touchdown, Broncos. That was perfect. Right in the corner, drop it in the bucket. That, that was is now 23-17, and an extra point that is uh, obviously quite large coming up right here. Well, and that was just the perfect timing on that play. Yep, perfect timing. Nobody really and, saw I mean, it coming. The Newcastle defensively read it. Not awful, but the right. throw was just right where it needed to be. It was right in the corner. Yeah. Good throw. And that's one of the things they have. I mean, basically, he pitched it to the other quarterback. Yeah. So... That's, uh, that is, you're correct. That's one of the uh, advantages of having two guys out That's there at right. any given time. So here comes a big extra point. With Wiska the hole, the kicker for Bethany is Ryland Sanders. Spot down, the kick is up, and it's through. So he makes the extra point, and it's 24-17. The, uh, the uh, racers, excuse me, will need to score. 
obviously, and then they can either decide to kick it or go for two on the win if they get there. So we'll, we'll decide uh, when we get there. Yeah. Well, this is their chance. You know, they didn't really have as much to lose as the Broncos. Here's their time to make that statement going into the playoffs. Just get it down here, break it, get it into it. They haven't been able to stop the running game hardly at all tonight. So, first and goal at the 10, down by a touchdown. Racers obviously need the TD and then the extra point to try and get us into double OT. If that were to happen, we would flip sides of the field and then Newcastle would have the ball first mm -hmm. if we were to get the double OT. Uh, anybody else got butterflies? It's a battle. It's wow. a battle. This has been a really fun one tonight. Yes. Uh, a great way to end the regular season. See if the racers can't find a way to pull out a little magic here. First and goal at the 10. Bolser the running back next to Jackson Burt, your quarterback. Bolser right up the middle, cut back. Broncos are on it. He only gets about a yard. Bolser Second down coming up. Let's see what they got up their sleeve. I think they're going to have to do something a lot like Bethany did. Kind of, uh, this is a good time for one of those plays. Yeah. Now that was a uh, a heck of a call in the situation by Coach yeah. John Arthur. Definitely <laughs> quite the spot to bust that thing out. No doubt about right. that. Second and goal from the nine. Burt faked the handoff. He'll fire on the flats. Caught by Nick's tackle ah. right away. Great. Open field tackle by Heim. Lost a couple. And Taylor Heim, who we talked about a whole lot in the pregame, a sensational play for the Broncos, was pretty much kept under wraps all night, but two huge plays in the overtime, the touchdown pass, and now that big tackle on Randy Nix, and it's third and goal from the 11. Starting to see both stands coming alive here. Man, if you're the racers, you got two plays to get 11 yards. I mean, you've done that right. a whole lot tonight. You got to kind of simplify it. Don't think you have to get it right here. Third and goal at the 11. Burt back oh. to pass. He'll fire in the end zone looking for Bolser, mm. and he just missed him. Had maybe a half step there on his guy, Woods Harrell, who's played a great game tonight for Bethany. Goes incomplete, and it's now fourth and goal from the 11. And this is your ball game here, obviously. Here racers go. got to get it in or the Broncos will escape with a win at Racer Stadium. And we'll start playing the points game on where they land in Man. district play. Whew. Fourth and goal at the 11. Four receiver set. Burt faked the handoff, back to pass. Got some pressure, he'll step up. Man over the middle, he's got Shannon, it's deflected! Oh. It's caught! Oh. Off the tip, Jackson Shanuel catches the touchdown, and the Racers are an extra point away from tying it. And here comes Toby Batchelder with a team for a little redemption. I apologize, I'm not talking much, but I can't breathe. <laughs> Holy cow, that was just one of those plays. It, the ball was deflected, it was a great find by Bird. He rolled out and he saw Shanuel in the back, it was deflected. But now here comes the extra point to try and tie it. Logan, the spot down, the kick is up from Batchelder. And that is right down the middle. Redemption for the kicker, Batchelder. We're going to play double OT at Racer Stadium. Catch your breath. Take a timeout. We'll come back. Double OT next on the Oklahoma Sports Network. This is Friday Night Football on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We fight the battles no one hears about. We drop into the middle of firefights to rescue others. And act as one-man air traffic control towers. We're the ones who go before all others. Join the fight. Back at Racer Stadium, Josh Calloway, Billy Collier. One of the games of the year unfolding in front of our eyes here at Racer Stadium. 
24-24. We're going into double OT. Newcastle will have the ball first. Apparently we're sitting at this end. I was under the impression we would flip sides, but that has uh, evidently not happened. Well, it looked like they came over and asked the coaches if, what side they wanted, so maybe it's a coach's choice. I don't know. So here we go in double OT. If you tuned in late, glad you found us, but you missed a lot. It's been a, a wild ball game, but the Broncos score to start OT. They stuffed the Racers three times, fourth and goal from the 11, and Burt finds Jackson Shane on the back of the end zone to tie the game. So here we go, first and goal from the 10, double OT. Bolster up the middle, push forward. He'll get about three, maybe two. And then Toby Batchelder, don't want that to be overlooked. The redemption, you know his heart was killing him after missing the, the field goal. It was a, a, a pretty much the same kick, pretty close. And he drills it to send us into double OT. So give a lot of credit to him. Yes. Step him right back out there, what, five, ten minutes of real time later and draining that. Good job. Yeah, excellent, excellent job, excellent kick. Second and goal from the eight. Bolster up the middle, push forward, keep the legs moving. He's down to about the five. The Third and goal right there. Five. Now the question, and we hope we don't have to broach it, but if they don't get this, do you kick or go for it? That'll be the big question. That's why they pay Coach Brooke with the big bucks to That's make right. like that. Because you can either trust your kicker to give you the lead and then hope the defense can hold, or you can think we need a touchdown. Right. That'll be the, the decision that Newcastle will have to make if they don't pick it up here. Third and goal mm. at the five. Run it with Bolser. It's a keeper from Bird. He pushes forward. He's running, and the decision will have to be made. Wow. It's going to be fourth and goal at the one. I think you go for it, Billy. I think you're at the one-yard line. You go for it. You got to. Here comes the beef. And that's what they're doing, and expect Mr. Randy Nix to be the guy toting the pill here. Now, I don't – maybe this is just crazy thinking, but this may be a good time for a hard count. Just enough get a to, little get, closer. Yeah. To, get, to get them to thinking, is it a hard count or not? to kind of back them off. Let's see what happens. Burt splits out, fourth and goal at the one. Direct snap to Nix, the big man running forward. You're not gonna stop it. Did he get there? They're not showing yet. I thought he got there that initial push, but I think they're signaling that he stopped them. Mm. Waiting for hands to go up or something. We still have not got a <laughs> we call. We have a hurt player down there. We have there. a lot of hands okay. in the air. Touchdown, Newcastle! It took about an hour to get the call. <laughs> Bethany celebrating on their side. I don't think they saw the signal. Now oh, they're stunned. Man. There is a lot of shocked faces. They ran to the side and they were, the whole stadium was celebrating it was because they didn't see the call. Well, see, I thought he got in and then got pushed back out. Now I was Coach Arthur's out and he, he wants an explanation. Well, I thought maybe there was a fumble the way everybody kept diving on him. Yeah. It is a weird, in, in, you know, for Coach Arthur, for Bethany, the, the complaints are valid. I mean, it, how do you, yeah, to no have, a, have a discussion for 30 full seconds after the play and then decide touchdown oh. is, is strange. And now they're going to flag Arthur. Well, now you have a decision. Do you go for two? You could. You very well could. I mean, the way Nick's just punched that in, you're thinking we could probably do that again, especially if we're only a half yard away. That's right. We'll see what they decide to do here. What a wild, <laughs> what a wild night of football. Oh, now they're no. waving it off. Waving the flag off. All right, well, moot point. Yeah. <laughs> Erase that last 20 seconds. The racers score touchdowns on back-to-back -back fourth and goals. Oh, man. And now another massive extra point here for Toby Batchelder to try and make this a seven-point lead. Spot down from Logan, kick from Batchelder. I'm pretty yeah, sure that went through, it did. Yeah. I have to wait for a second. I, I felt really confident about that one, but I still waited. Extra points good, and it's 31-24. Now, I wasn't gonna say a word till I saw the umpire, the official, man. I know. I, I wasn't know. gonna say a word. So now can the racer defense find a way to buckle down and keep the Broncos out of the end zone? Man. This this pretty low scoring defensive game is about to look like a, an old school Big 12 game on the scoreboard all of a sudden. 31-24. Take out last week for Bethany and imagine this is one of the fewer points that they've had and it's in two overtimes. Yeah, yeah. 
So, here we go again. First and goal at the 10. Can the racer defense, and you know the racer faithful is on there. The swings of emotion in this game. I Both know. teams have thought they were dead like five separate times. What a ball game. No. A great way to end this, the regular season. Oh, great way. Couldn't ask for much more. As good of a game as we've ever had. So Wet Wiska is still going to be the quarterback for Bet. Feels like they've committed to that for the uh, goings on here the rest of the way. Can the racer D stand up? First and goal at the 10. Wet Wiska run. Oh. Up the middle here for Gilliland. He doesn't get a whole lot. He gets about three, second goal to seven. Oh, this is just the chess match part 21. of it. You know, just and you wonder too, I mean, on the road, all the emotion, if and Bethany scores, eight. do they go for two? To try to win the game, that's gonna be another, I mean, these coaches are having to make some really tough decisions yes. right now. This is where it, so you wanna be a, a, a head football coach. It's where yeah. it gets tough. Yeah. Second to go from a seven. Four receivers set for Wet Wiska. Gilliland, the running back, back there next to him. I'm is up at the top there. Second and goal. Wet Wiska rolls out. Pitch out to Gilliland. Bounce outside. He's bottled up. He didn't get much. He got about a yard, maybe two. And it's going to be third and goal. That was great closing in there. You saw T.J. Bradford go in, did not let him get that edge, and so it just kind of backed him up back into the rest of the defense. Great job. Now we're looking at third on the, what, six-yard line, six and a half? Yeah, it looks like about five and a half or so. Just outside the five. Two shots to get it in from there for the Broncos. If they don't, the Racers find a way to get a massive signature win to close out the season. Win number eight. Third and goal at the six. Five receiver set, nobody back with Witwiska. He'll take it, back to pass. Rolls out, Tosh Smith chasing him. He'll fire in the end zone, it's oh, thrown! Oh, man! Calderon was all alone and he dropped it! Incomplete, fourth and goal coming up. Fourth and goal from the six-yard Oh, my goodness. Oh, you see his body language you know, out there. You just hurt for yeah, him a it, little it bit. Stinks. It, it stinks, it does. So here's the game. Calderon, I, I, in all the freneticness, I didn't know, I didn't pay attention to which number, but somebody from Newcastle was barreling in toward him. I think he just heard footsteps and mm. looked away for just too long. And now here's your ball game. If the Racers can get a stop here, they'll win. And Bethany wants a timeout. Coach Arthur wants to talk about it. Probably a good idea. Hey, you, you can't take them with you, right? It's no. a cliche, so. Talk about it and figure it out. It'll be fourth and goal at the six with oh. the game on the line. This game that was one of the quicker games of the season <laughs> has <laughs> evolved into, uh, although we still had games go four quarters that went later than this, honestly, 9.54. Boy, and you got a feel for some of these adults. If this is a Friday night game, you go, well, we sleep in. That's true. No, we're not sleeping in tomorrow. It's the reverse for me. Normally, I got to get up and do stuff on Saturday. Tomorrow's Friday. I have Fridays off. So I'm feeling, let's play deep into the night. Woohoo! I don't care. Well, happy for you. <laughs> <laughs> Fourth and goal at the six. This has been an epic ball game, and the Racers have got a shot here to try and win it right now with their defense. Oh, boy, what do you do here if you're the Broncos and you're too far out to run it, so you got to trust Wet Wiska to find a man, and he had a man. He had him. Calderon just looked away for a second too long. I think you have to just go with the option, whatever the defense does, kind of that run pass option, I guess. Fourth and goal at the six. This is your ball game. Wet Wiska back to pass, fire in the end zone. It's up, it's incomplete, and a oh. flag down. And the Broncos will have a little bit more life the racers will have to suspend the celebration. The, half the team was out on the field, but mm. a flag goes down, and there's no automatic first. It'll still be fourth down, but it'll be another shot from about half the distance. The the wow. They're, they're discussing it, too. Boy, that was uh, coaches over, tough. Coaches over here are saying it's uh, uncatchable. And it, it, it very arguably was. Yeah. It very arguably was. But I think it'd take a lot to take that off the board. But again, not automatic first down in high school football. So it is still fourth down, but they'll move it up to the three. 
And the Racers can still hold and obviously win this game right here. This is still fourth down. Wow. What a ball game. I know. <laughs> what a ball game. Holy cow. And you got you got just got to stand up and play big boy ball right here. I have a feeling they're going to just try and muscle it up the I middle. Think so. I think that's quite possible. Fourth and goal at the three. This is your game. Gilliland spreads out. Direct snap to Wet Whiska. He'll fire over the middle. Pass is caught, and he's in. Touchdown, Broncos. That's wow. Geisler. And now the Broncos are an extra point away from tying it. Ugh. The clutch plays from these players on both teams. Can't say enough. Can't say enough. Those those touchdown calls for Bethany. Where have those been all night? Holy cow, those are great calls out there. And yeah, man, a lot going deep into the playbook tonight is uh, Coach Arthur. They want to try and get themselves a home playoff game. <laughs> that's, mean, that's right. That's the reality of it. And here's a, something too that I didn't think about earlier. And we had a timeout from Newcastle, maybe icing the kicker a little bit here. Something that I didn't think about earlier that I should have taken into consideration. Bethany doesn't want to win this game by one point. Right. That's not good for you in the points because I'm pretty sure, and we can check it, we will in post game. but Tuttle's going to have passed him for the one seed. I don't see it, barring something crazy, because Tuttle won their game by more than 15. I, I don't need to spell it out for you, but their points are going to pass Bethany. But if they want to stay in front of Blanchard, they probably need to win this game by about a touchdown or, or, or maybe more, depending on you know how this thing shakes out. So mm. they, they probably don't want to win it by two. Right. Which is uh, kind of one of those beautiful, weird things about high school football in the final week of the regular season when you're doing this whole point differential thing. Mm. You know, the coaches, they probably, they've asked what the scores are, and they're saying, we can't win this game by one. We need to win it by more than that. So all you guys that are saying, we don't need to have math, and we don't use math when it we're an adult. It gets complicated, man. Here we are, the Wizards. And I just yeah. keep watching. You see out there on the 10-yard line, the place kicker's uh, kind of T right there. I went to, oh, it just got picked up. They're going for two, it looks like. That they are. So after all that conversation, obviously, they decided we're good with winning by one if we can get there. This is it. One play for the game. 31-30, two-point conversion. Ball game right here. Wet Wisco rolls out to pass. He'll fire. It is caught by Gillen. Oh. And, and he trucks his man, and he's in. Two-point conversion is good, and the Broncos win a thriller in Newcastle, 32-31. An absolute wow. classic at Great Racer Stadium. Gillen catches the little dump-off pass, lowers the shoulder. Phillips came up and laid the pop on him. But Gilliland wouldn't be denied. He punches it in, and the Broncos win. What wow. a ball game. Great game. you got to stand and applaud both these teams tonight. Incredible. I mean, everybody is still here. I haven't seen anybody leave yet. We just watched an incredible, great, great game. All-time classic uh, for me, at least, and probably one that uh, these players, these fans are going to forget for a long time. Coach Rickman and Coach Arthur went out there right away and kind of gave each <laughs> other a handshake and a look of like, Man, that was unbelievable. What a ball game. Yeah. Racers on the wrong side of it, but an unbelievable effort. Bethany wins it 32-31 in double OT. Stick with us. Billy and I are going to digest it. We're going to take a break. We're going to digest it, and we're going to give you the playoff scenarios, where we're headed next week. We're going to talk about that next on the Oklahoma Sports Network postgame show. Stick with us through the break here on OSN. CFD. Our mission is to deliver quality dentistry by providing big practice benefits with a little practice feel. Since 2008, we've updated our look, technology, and have added new smiles to our tenured staff to better care for you right here at home. Convenience for you is one of our biggest goals, and we often provide same-day treatment to minimize your time off work. We are open Monday through Friday to serve you. Visit CFDOK.com for details. We look forward to seeing you at our big little practice. Sidelined by surgery, illness, injury? Valor Physical Therapy can help. At Valor PT, our skilled therapists create a rehabilitation program individualized for you with education and encouragement each step of the way. Whether it's sports or the activities of life, let Valor get you back in the game. 
Start now at 405-265-6449. No referral needed. Mention Oklahoma Sports Network and get a free t-shirt at your first appointment. It's no secret that life is busy and you have a million things on your to-do list. Here at Community Bank of Oklahoma, we've made banking simple again. We can help you get to the important things in life, like the big game tonight. We do all the heavy lifting so you don't have to. Race towards us at Community Bank of Oklahoma because we wouldn't be a community without you. Coast Technology Group specializes in audio, video, and lighting for schools, house of worship, home, and business. Work with our team's engineers to design the right system for your conference rooms, video telecommunications, stadiums, auditoriums, video walls, home theater, and automation. Whether your next project is large or small, let our team with over 150 years of combined experience help design the right system with simple, reliable technology. All right, back here at Racer Stadium, Billy Collier and I are doing math, which is uh, <laughs> a dangerous place to be in. Yes. Um, so let's start with the game. We'll get into the playoffs in a second. Let, let's adjust the game real fast. Bethany wins it 32-31, all-timer. Um, I mean, what can you say? Um, it's a it's a it's a devastating loss. It's a gut not devastating. It's it's a gut punch for Newcastle. It's your final home game. They really wanted this one, and you made like five plays to win it. You know, huge moment plays to win it. And you thought you had it, won a regulation, obviously, all those things. But at the end of the day, it was an incredible game. Um, both teams laid it all out there. I'm so impressed with these high school kids that in these clutch moments with all these people here watching you to step up the way that they did, um, unbelievable. I mean, just a, a thriller game. You, you, it hard, you, you know, it stinks for the racers and these seniors in their final home game. It, it really does. But... It's one of those games where you just have to tip your cap like that was an amazing game. It could have went either way, obviously, and it just they made one more play. And it's just that that simple. Well, and just to sound cliche, you hate for anybody to lose this game. I mean, they It was gonna be a crusher out. for somebody. It Man, was gonna be a crusher it, for somebody. They every touchdown, every point was earned. Nobody lost it for their team, nobody won it just for their team. They fought and fought and fought. And it was just an incredible, incredible game. One that I won't forget about for a long time. And to watch these teams kind of now, they're just now starting to break up a little bit out of their uh, team huddle type things and talking and letting the emotion out. What an incredible, incredible moment in high school football here in Oklahoma. And just a great, man, just a great game. Uh, you just really got to give it to I mean, I, I'm yeah. just speechless yeah. at how great this game was. And after the game, they're on the 50. They're, they're almost looking like they're relieved to each other, and they're congratulating each other and hugging each other. And just incredible, incredible moment to watch this game. <laughs> Certainly an all-timer, one that I'll never forget. Uh, obviously, we're on the other side of that Newcastle right. cash. Unbelievable you know, insane 20-point comeback game. But this is right up there with it as far as just un, 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 insane. I mean, insane, uh, the things yes. we saw, um, the way it played out, um, all-timer, certainly one that we're not going to forget anytime soon. Um, heck of Absolutely. a ball game. So Bethany wins it 32-31. to 31. So here's where the math portion of the, of the evening comes into play. Um, by my count, Bethany, despite winning tonight, and this is why I was surprised they went for two. And this is exactly why. By my count, Bethany, dis even though they won, has fallen all the way down to third. Uh, oh, wow. Because Tuttle and Blanchard both won their games by more than 15 tonight. So by my math, they all have the same record. They all beat each other. It's a three-way tie. They all have the same record, so it comes down to points. And when you look at the points, coming in tonight, Blanchard had 53. They won by 15, so 68. 
Tuttle had 56. They won by 15, so 71. And Bethany had 63. They won by one, so 64. So that sounds right to you, right? I mean, that, that match checks out. Yeah, that makes uh, sense. They fall down to third, even though they won tonight. That's kind of the cruel part of it. Amazing win. They're going to celebrate it. They deserve to. But even despite that, even if technically, and I hate to take a little bit of the steam out of it, even if they didn't get that two, we'd be in the exact same spot. That's Bethany right. would be third, Newcastle would be fourth. And that's what I would say to these racer players. Gut punch, but you're in the exact same spot. If uh, yeah. you, know, you didn't lose anything there. So Bethany falls down to third, even with the win tight. Tuttle wins the district. Blanchard finishes second. Um, Bethany's third, Newcastle fourth. If my math is correct, I suggest everybody goes and checks that <laughs> themselves. But that, if my math's correct, and that would mean that next week, next Friday, the playoffs, Newcastle will be heading to Elk City. They won District 1. I want to say they had a one-game league coming to play tonight, and they won, so it didn't, points didn't even matter to them. They just needed to win, and they did that. They beat John Marshall. So it'll be Newcastle and Elk City. By my, <laughs> my math, my bracketology, facing off next week in the first round of the playoffs. An old foe, obviously a team we've seen a lot. We saw them each the last couple of years. They were in complete rebuild mode even two years ago where they went one game, yeah, two games. No, and they've come that. a long way since then. It'll be the Racers and the Elks next Friday at their place in the first round of the playoffs. Mm. I think I think that's everything. I think I covered it all. I think. Yeah. I hope. And I think you're right. I think the way you're deducing that and the way you've talked about it, we've talked off air about it. I can I suggest everybody double checks that themselves, but I'm pretty sure that, that what everything I just said is accurate. Well, and think about it, they haven't seen Elk City this year and who knows, the way they have played against Bethany, the way they played against Tuttle, the way you told me they played against a Blanchard, those are the only three losses. And all three of those losses were not. Well, they beat Bland. Oh, Newcastle. I'm sorry. I'm right. Sorry. I got confused. Right <coughs> so those were not all blowouts. So it's not like they're going to Elk City as, you know, food for the gods. Yeah. You know, they're going in there to play, and they think they can win. And, and Elk City's not going to overlook them either. So that will be an exciting, exciting game. It will be. And, you know, the Elks are obviously a team that, obviously, they've been in the same district as Newcastle for a long time before this year. And. Newcastle had their number. I mean, they beat them last year, beat them the year before when we were doing the games. And so you kind of have a little bit of that, uh, I don't know the right word, a bit of that mental for Elk City of like, yeah, we had a great season. We won our district, but look who's waiting for us, a team that right. we've struggled with. So we'll see. Uh, we'll have a full week plus a day to digest that. Yep. And, um, boy, what a ball game. What a season it was. Ah. It was a great, another great year of racer football. We're going to keep it rolling into the playoffs. Hopefully we have a nice, deep, long playoff run but um we'll see what happens next week it will be there every step every step of the way step. osn's got you covered newcastle uh, until they're done playing we'll have it for you on the oklahoma sports network an absolutely epic game we thank you so much for hanging out with us i'm sure a lot of people picked up along the way <laughs> people finding out like that game's going to double ot and hopped in i appreciate everybody yeah. who tuned in this was an absolute thriller racers on the wrong side of it but what a ball game on a unbelievably windy night let's get let's get out of here it's so right, windy yeah. i'm tired of being in the wind <laughs> i'm tired of being hot and cold at the same time somehow <laughs> let's get out of here what a ball game another uh. great year at racer stadium we're hitting the road next week for the playoffs racers and elks 16 teams remain hunting for the gold ball newcastle's one of them and they'll have a shot to continue their season next friday against elk city that's it for us Thank you so much for watching, as always. For Uriah Martinez up top, working the camera, and Carson Wade on the production. Billy Collier, my partner. I'm Josh Calloway as a huge wind gust hits me right in the face. Signing off from Racer Stadium. We'll catch you next week from Elk City and the playoffs. Good night, everybody.